Live from Brooklyn, New York, this is Stay Busy with Armand Sadler. Well, you know that I'm the guy. I'm out here living life. I'm busy. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another edition of Stay Busy with Armand Sadler, where we have responsible discussions on the entertainment business and the entertainment culture. I am, of course, your host, Head Honcho, Vegan Chorizo Poppy, founder of BNB. Now, usually BNB means bald nigga ballers, but in the in the name of my <laughs> Love Island fascination recently, I am bald nigga bombshell. Yo. <laughs> A new bombshell has entered the podcast studio, and his name is Chine Du. The only man to sit in front of Taylor Rooks and not tell a lie, Armand Sadler. Now you gotta make my own up. I got you. You gotta make my own up. I'm a ghostwriter. The bar is too high. Like I can't. A new bombshell entered the. Like what? Like, but y'all know, y'all know what's going on. It's your girl Two B's here. Yeah, it's your boy Will here. But like, like, damn. (laughs) It's like, damn. It's a new bombshell. Nah, for real. Like, excuse me. You got write my own. I got you. I got you. Both of y'all. Next week, I'll, I'll have them ready prepared. That boy's for you. Let me know if you need show. any info from me. I got you. I got you for sure, for sure. But good to have y'all. Always good to see y'all. Hope y'all had good had good weekends quickly. Well, what, what y'all do? You was at Broccoli City. Yeah, I went to Broccoli City. It was a time. It was always. It's always a good time. Mm. Um, uh, covering events is not fun. No, <laughs> it's not. I need to say that mm-hmm. covering events is not fun. But you know, I paced myself, planned things out accordingly. On that Sunday when I knew everyone was going on that I'd want to see and who wasn't going to talk to press, I'm like, all right, I could just vibe out and be with my friends. Um, mm. A highlight was Bryson Tiller hosting the Trap Karaoke mm. and people singing his hits while he helped them sing it. So mm. that was a vibe. Nice. That's fun. Fuck, yeah. Fuck. yeah, Um, for me, I was going to go out, but you know what started this weekend was the goddamn Olympics. Yes. So I was really watching Olympics, and I really was like USA'd out, bro. And it was I've kinda, never been more. And it's kind of cra- it's crazy. <laughs> I was thinking about it, bro. Every four years, like we really tap into like America and like USA. Like mm-hmm. we was, I'm like fully like watching it, screaming at the TV, watching butterfly um, swimming. Like it's like it's like yeah, bro. Niggas watching fencing, bro. watching like, all bro. types of stuff. So I've been I've I've been I've been tapped into the Olympics. It's yeah. actually. It's really cool, bro. I fuck yeah, with it, bro. Absolutely. Actually, a lot. <clears throat> absolutely. Beyonce, sure. her involvement had the fucking mm-hmm. internet going crazy. Mm-hmm. I was too busy at Broccoli City, but when I saw that, I'm like, what the fuck? Yeah. Yeah. Beyonce. And the niggas had LeBron at the front of that boat look, looking like a fucking, like, <laughs> like it was the, it the constitutional bro, era. It, looked, it didn't, like, yeah, bro. It almost didn't look real. It like, looked like I was like, yo, this is like, they could put this in the Constitution right now. No, for real. And niggas would be like... <laughs> Yes. That's America. <laughs> he belongs. Facts. Like, he, he belongs. belongs. But um, if you want to earn a, a gold medal, what you should do is subscribe to our YouTube channel and all audio platforms. Like, share, leave her a review, all that good stuff. Tell a friend to tell a friend about the busy family. Of course, the Patreon, our podcast only fans. You can subscribe at patreon.com <laughs> backslash stay busy pod. We have a new episode up for y'all discussing our problematic faves. And we got more Patreon content coming for you. Now, we have a big conversation uh, from last week to follow up on. Shout out to uh, the the uh, the page Aubrey's attorney uh, for that great question about Drake and his yeah. his signature songs. Um, our Instagram comments were flooded. Our Twitter was going crazy. Our TikTok's been going crazy. So make sure y'all follow that at Stay Busy Pod and chime in. Um, but I do, uh, you know, it's a week later, so I do want to follow up with y'all and get your answers on what you think Drake's two signature songs are. So. The first one will be Best I Ever Had, okay. his ba- his breakthrough, which mm-hmm. I said. And it was really the second one that I was debating on. And, like, honestly, there's no right answer for this, yeah. I feel like, because it's just too many possibilities. But not the one that I like. <laughs> the one that will be his signature. Mm-hmm. <sighs> I guess, take care. Mm. Like the one re- song Rihanna. Yeah. Okay. What about you, Will? 
it was hard for me. I mean, I think I'm still going with my first choice when I said on the episode. I mean, because for me personally, I feel like Miss Me was so important to me. Mm-hmm. You know what also I like? I like I like um Light Up as like a deep Drake cut, but mm-hmm. it's one of those things that it's not the most recognizable one. Yeah. You know what I also like too? I like Fancy. Mm. With, F- I like, fancy had a moment. I, yeah. I like Fancy. fancy and then you know what a lot of people was telling me and a lot of people that... <sighs> I got a lot of voice messages and a lot of crazy things from people. <laughs> Shout out to y'all sending the voice yeah, messages. People were sending voice Jumping messages to request. me. And I had message requests. Like, people I don't even know or follow, they were sending me like, yo, it should be this one. And I feel like, especially going off what Miss 2B said, you know, I think her, her choice was good. And I I just think you have to touch on, like, one dance Drake and, mm-hmm. like, stuff like that. So I yeah. maybe I, I think I'll choose one dance. I yeah. don't know, bro. A it's lot. tough. There's like, so many errors. I'm just like, bro, so I, don't, I, don't, I don't know, man. A lot of people brought up, and I felt stupid for forgetting it. Started from the bottom. That too. Really had a moment. It like, did. had a that big too. moment. And I, I, I was like, damn, like, you could even go zero to 100. Like, the, those ones with the catchy hooks yeah. that were on the radio a lot and just became these mantras. Like, I, zero to 100 drop, that bottom. was everybody's caption. Started yeah. from the bottom drop, that was everybody's caption. Like, that was really the era where Drake became the IG caption that started. Low key, even when I was writing around that time and I would write things like, things went zero to yeah. 100 <laughs> yeah. like, in the article. It, it, isn't it so crazy he's made so many phrases that have just become, like, common, like, more life. Niggas say that on your birthday every <clears throat> year. Well, Jamaican's been saying that. Right, right. Yeah, he, he's, he's helped popularize them in the... In the mainstream, American you're right. American mainstream, right. yeah, yeah so, but that's definitely a Jamaican story. You know, absolutely, you know absolutely. it was crazy when 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 he came up with YOLO and mm-hmm. how niggas was like talking about like it's corny. Yeah. But then like people started thinking about it, it was like, well, I guess you only do live Bro. once. It's so then niggas was like, <laughs> <laughs> so everybody was starts. like, yeah, I'm cool with it. Like, yeah, YOLO, like, yo. What? What? Like they'll like they'll hit, they'll they'll harp on how corny it is and then like slander it into popularity. Because mm-hmm. yeah. like yo, YOLO is kind of corny, but it's like, bro. It's like, true, You can apply it to so much. I mean, like, I guess. Like, sh- sh- shooting a half-court shot in basketball. YOLO. Like, <laughs> DMing a girl you got no business DMing. YOLO. Like, that's nah, just... <laughs> don't do that. Don't do that. Like, bro, I remember, I got, uh-uh, I remember how they was talking... <laughs> I remember how they was talking about starting from the bottom. And, like, I just re- I just listened... Like, I listened to it recently. Excuse me. Listened to it recently. And, like, beginning when he's, like, talking about, like, start it, start it. Like, yeah. that shit is hard, yeah. bro. Like, he's, like, really, like... And I know people be like, he didn't start from the bottom and, like, all this type of shit. But, like, at the end of the day, bro, that song is... It was something that people related to, even if it yeah. wasn't his reality. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, mm-hmm. And so that, that's mm-hmm. just what... That's what it's been all about, his career. is like mm-hmm. making things that people can relate to, even if it's not actually his story. You um, know what song I heard for the first time in a minute? Find Your Love. Mm. And I was just like, yo, I used to be obsessed with mm-hmm. this song right here, mm-hmm. yo. Yeah, that, that was a classic. That was one of them ones. That could be a signature, too. Honestly, like, I still don't know what the answer is. It's it's not easy. It's not easy. But we got some really good answers from the people. Like I said, started from the bottom. Um, Marvin's Room came up a lot, which I I thought about it. I thought about it. So I wasn't mad at that I got tired of that song, so... I, funny story. Uh, that was summer 2011. So I performed it at a coffee house when I went to Syracuse Summer College. Who is this guy? And, yo? Where's yeah, the camera? Who is yeah, this like, guy? Yeah, like like sang and rapped. Like I I, I kind of went crazy. Like the, 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 they was loving it up there. They, they was loving it up there. You're a but, legend. Yeah, I, I, do, I, I do some things here and there. Uh, Hotline Bling. I saw a couple people yeah, say, right. and I think you have to put that there just because of that being the turn, like before views, like of him becoming this icon, making. Like, I remember when Hotline Blink first dropped, I was like, what the fuck is Drake doing? I like that. Like, and, and, and it grew on me pretty quickly. I was like, oh, this shit fire. But at first you hear it, you're like, yeah. That's exactly what? what I mean. You know, because he stole it from Drum. I mean, yes. That, yes. Uh, that, Justice for that's Drum. A whole that, that's a whole nother story. Because <laughs> I've heard some things about the Drum situation. But, um, yeah. Headlines, which I, I think I mentioned that last week. Yeah, you did. Um, let's see what else we got. What else we got? These fucking trolls putting out like us. I hate niggas so much. Yeah. <laughs> I hate niggas so Yo, much. That's crazy. You got replies with that? Yes. Yeah. They, they commented that on our page. And that the, that was one of the ones that got the uh, the most likes, too. <laughs> I, I hate niggas. I people hate are niggas so stupid, much. bro. Uh, like, best I ever had. Stupid. Successful. In my feelings. Ooh, successful. Passion fruit. Mm. I saw some people say Tuesday Slide. I was like, yeah, I'm bugging. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Y'all bugging on that worse. one. <laughs> I actually want to forget that song. Yeah. I, I mean, well, when I play Darkly and Demo Tapes, I skip it. You know what I wanted to say, but I know no one would say, but I feel like it's a lot of people's, like, deep cut. <laughs> mm-hmm. right. Madonna. 
Madonna is one of those like signature style songs right. for sure. Mm-hmm. For sure. It's, or, a great, it's a great record. Or what's the one when he was talking about? Oh, no. Ain't no telling his heart. Is no, yeah. Me. I mean, yeah. That's, that's my favorite Drake album. He's got, he's got too much on if you're reading this. It's too late. Like, Bro, that shit is crazy. Like, he was talking about cutting a like if she could like it was, he was talking about crazy shit. Yeah, that he was wild. That he was album wild is for sure. crazy. Yeah. yeah, Houston, Atlanta, Vegas. Mm. <sighs> like mm. it's it's a lot. It's mm. a lot, but mm. some really good responses from y'all. Um, Tusi Slide and not like us. I'm gonna I'm gonna ignore <clears throat> those completely. But um, yeah, I thought it was a really great conversation. So again, shout out to Aubrey's attorney. Shout out to everyone who tapped in with us. And hope y'all stay and listen because we're a great pod outside of our Drake conversations. <laughs> I, I promise. I promise you that. With that, let's jump into this new music chat, entertainment chat, news chat, all that good stuff. So we didn't touch on this too much, but um, Joe Biden uh, re- essentially rescinded his um, opportunity to be reelected for president and then Kamala Harris stepped in. Is it Kamala? Kamala? I feel like people would be pronouncing it. I say Kamala. Oh, me too. I say, say Kamala. Too. Kamala. Kamala. Okay, cool. That sounds, Unanimous. That sounds, that sounds better. Stay busy as stamped it. And Kamala. blacker. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Kamala say Kamala. Yeah, that sounds, sounds like I'm about like, to call your manager. It, it right. does sound crazy. It, it just sound sounds crazy. like you're pronouncing her name wrong. Yeah. I don't know. But she stepped in. Um, she was endorsed by Biden immediately, and uh, Barack and Michelle endorsed her. And she's been having a really big groundswell of support. And so Whoa. I feel like, and Trump has been trying to get the black vote already, but I feel like he might be seeing that there's a little pressure on him now. And so he's making more concerted efforts to get the black vote. Uh, and someone in particular who he is working with is Billy McFarland, who uh, was one of the organizers of Firefest. If you don't remember Firefest, <laughs> no was way. Ja Rule's festival. No way. No way. That no way. was no way. did not actually happen. No Literally started a whole shit. controversy. Holy there was a documentary shit. about it. And I just find no it so way. funny that Donald Trump, who is running just the most like unconventional wild campaign of course he's going to work with someone who who when trump was president the, his justice department sent this Locked nigga to jail yeah. <laughs> and now billy is helping donald trump arrange all these meetings with rappers so just very funny um well we'll see how successful it is for him i mean obviously what like we talked about on? chef g met up with him ot7 Kwani. we've got guys like uh lil wayne has endorsed him 50 cent is you know Teased potentially voting for him. Yeah, that's and, so weird. Uh, Snoop Dogg made amends with him just years I mean, after saying "fuck you." I mean, so. bro, you know how many texts I got over the over this past weekend and the, and that day that he posted the attitude Don Tolliver oh, shit. Yeah. Oh and man, people, people yeah. Let's fact check this. People were texting me twenty four seven. Did y'all approve this? Like, did y'all approve? Like, no. Like, is, this, is, it, is, it is. just. He just used. I mean, he just used it. Bro. He he strikes me as the type to do whatever he wants. Yeah, he does true. whatever he wants. Yeah, already. I mean, that's like that's that's the thing. And like, I felt. I don't know if I felt bad, but like, I just felt like. I felt kind of like I guess bad because people asking if we clear this. Like, no way. Mm-hmm. Like this. Like this nigga yeah. just used. But it, the way bro. he's been moving is like yeah. you gotta ask. You gotta ask. Yeah. No, I I felt it. Mm-hmm. I understand. I don't understand, especially it. how other rappers have been moving with them. Like it would be yeah, easy yeah. to it assume. Would, it would be easy oh, to assume shit. that we endorse that we just endorsed, bro. Like yeah. n- like niggas coming with the Make America Slizzy hats again or some <laughs> shit. Like <that. laughs> Imagine. No, it's crazy, That'd be bro. terrible work. It's crazy because I I hate that sexy Reddit is doing it with her. I just her um like branding. tour and merch and all that. I, I don't yeah. like that. I, don't like I that. hate how easily we we are influenced as people and like how we just think shit is just like cool. But that's just that's another conversation. Yeah. That's like maybe a Patreon episode. We don't we don't need black but, people doing any variations of, of like of, just of like the MAGA like yo stuff. just chill we don't need like, that. just At chill. All. It's not that cool, bro. We don't need it. I swear to God, it's not that cool. Yeah. I saw someone suggest like, it's not that cool, y'all. That Kamala say um, make America laugh again so that the initials can be her yeah. initials. The, the, don't, don't do that shit. That was so do corny, that shit. for real. But what's surprising to me are the rappers who are, like, advocating for her, like, Plies mm-hmm. and, like, even Rick Ross. He called all these hood niggas dumb. Mm-hmm. Like, y'all dumb if y'all think that $1,200, y'all gonna get money again, one. Yeah, and right. two, that that is, that earns Trump your vote. Like, like what? Pl- Plies is real, though. Plies been on Trump ass all year. No, like, he has. I fuck, so I, I, fuck, I, I fuck with that. that. I fuck with that. I fuck with that. Yeah. And also fuck with what you just said. Like the fact that 
like, do niggas think like a pandemic's coming back around again? Like, do niggas think like they like, do? Like, 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 do they think the world's about to just keep ending every four years and like we're just gonna get money? Like, like it's the Olympics? They, they do. What the fuck? Like, people are so blinded by like They're theories and conspiracies as fuck, bro. that <clears throat> reality they, they just don't see reality. I mean, it was only oh. twelve. Like, like, like Miss Two B just said, it's only twelve hundred dollars. Or just do their due diligence at that. Like, they don't even understand how it works. Like, yeah, facts. It's just any sitting president would have had to give oh. us any relief, y'all. So mm. just make sure that yeah. y'all <laughs> do what y'all supposed to do because police Holy might have immunity shit, yeah. if Trump is in office. So Holy yeah, shit. I'll never forget that tweet during the pandemic when he was like, well, "When the looting starts, starts the shooting starts." I Yo, like, and, I, and the fact that he made it rhyme too, like, what what a dickhead! No, I ain't gonna front. <laughs> there were a lot of laughable <laughs> moments that I was ashamed that I laughed at, <laughs> like the free ASAP ASAP. That yeah. made me. That made he me was, chuckle. I didn't know. He, I didn't know he even said. He is, yeah, and I went. I had to go on his page every time a tweet was on Instagram. I'm like, let me go on his page to make sure this shit is real. Yeah, because niggas be and photoshopping. It was real. Yeah, it was real every time. Yeah, I, th- I think Trump is the only <laughs> nigga where you see his tweets posted somewhere else, and you you know it's actually him. It's not Photoshop because he be saying the most outlandish. Him shit, and AB. Yeah. Oh my god. AB <laughs> uh, is a whole. <laughs> He's ridiculous. He low key. He's one of those niggas that low key need to be banned from Twitter. I can't lie. Absolutely. Some of the shit he be saying is like, bro. He's Absolutely. Wild. Him him and Kanye could go to some other app. Word. We don't need that no more. But moving on, um, we got some news from the Concrete Boys camp. Uh so care uh they were at Broccoli City, right? They were. Con- Concrete Boys, which is Lil Lil Yachty's label collective. They were at Broccoli City, and people immediately noticed that Caribou wasn't there. They checked the Concrete Boys Instagram account. Um, her name, her page is no longer tagged there. She doesn't have it in her um, bio anymore. She unfollowed Yachty and a bunch of other people. And so the word circling around the internet was that she uh, left the label. Now, there's some people who believe this is part of her rollout because her album is allegedly titled Where's Caribou? And there were fans that were posting her or tagging her on Instagram story, like asking where's Caribou? And she was uh, reposting it and all that. And so there's a lot of controversy there. I will say I got some direct confirmation. Uh, I'm not going to say who, but she, she's gone. She's gone from concrete. Oh, damn. That would have been some she's fire gone. marketing, she's though. Gone. I ain't going to hold yeah, you. I mean, yeah, it would have yeah. been fire marketing. Also, I mean, I got the confirmation, too. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, it's it's very it's very real. Mm-hmm. And I, don't, I don't know how much I should, yeah. Yeah, I don't, because I, I, I really didn't dig. It, it was something that I was just, I was just having a casual conversation, and the person brought it up, and I was like, Oh shit! Wow. Okay, it's real. Um, so I I don't know the terms of it. I don't know if it was amicable. I don't know if it was negative, but it is it is definitely true. She is for sure gone from concrete. How how do y'all feel her sing, solo career uh, will go? I think um, <laughs> I'm, I'm sick. She just shook her head. Um, I think it will. It's going to be interesting. I will say that. I think in my rule book for artists, I always say never sign to another artist anyways. Mm, yeah. That's my number one rule book. Why are book. they all doing that? Number one rule book. And, and like, if you're like an artist and niggas be like, oh, I'm thinking about doing this. Like, think about signing. Like, no, nah, don't do that, bro. Mm-hmm. Okay. I, it might be a longer road doing your own thing, yeah. but it always pays off 10 times more every time. I mean, you can look at people like, you can look at people like e like like Hardy trying to sign to ASAP and like trying to do that and like I, I used to hear conversations about him in the studio, talking about yeah I know these niggas don't want want me bigger than him bigger mm-hmm. than them talking yeah. about either Rocky or talking about Uzi or talking about just anybody like you know what I'm saying like yeah. I know these niggas don't want me bigger than so it's always you always cap yourself yeah yeah so I think. It might be a longer road. It might be. It might take a little bit longer than what it, what it, you know, what it was supposed to take. But I think she'll be okay. Yeah. She just has to. She just has to lock in a little bit more. I mean, she had the most motion mm-hmm. out of everybody. That's what so. I was gonna say. Like people called her the breakout star of the group, and a she lot of people, was. a lot of people are excited to see mm-hmm. her leave. No, she was damn near the face of this. Honestly, like, I don't other know other the mother than Yachty. Like, <laughs> what? Yeah. Outside of Yachty, like, yeah, mm-hmm. you know, I really can't. I mean. No disrespect, like all respect, but like you really don't care about the other niggas that much. Like other know. niggas is cool, mm-hmm. like yeah. they, they they like they support. Yeah, but ain't nobody here to see you, Otis. No, <laughs> <laughs> they not. <laughs> like, yeah, like so. 
It'll, it'll be interesting. I know for me personally, her music didn't really do it for me, but I acknowledged how popular she was getting. I was like, okay, like she's, she's Same. doing a thing. So salute. Same. Mm-mm, I don't care how popular things are getting anymore. Because to be <laughs> honest, we've seen Real that shit. people don't know what they're talking about and they don't have minds of their own. Yeah. And there's a lot of group think going yeah. on. So like so much. I ha like it's important for me to stand on business, especially when I know something is trash or just yeah. something really isn't that fire because look what happened to Le Bebe. It's true. Hello. Yeah. Well, I, I I think it's a scenario where it's like I, I completely agree. Fuck group think. Like I don't me? I don't just jump on waves. <laughs> but like if, if she ends up proving me wrong, it's like, okay, cool. You right. know? And, and like it doesn't happen too often. A lot of people Hel- don't prove me wrong. Hello. Often. I like getting proven wrong. Yeah, yeah. But I'm 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 always open to it. So mm-hmm. you show know, me. I'll, I will see. Mm-hmm. I'll see what it is, but I know like what I've heard hasn't really moved me much. At all. And you know, it's just kind of compartmentalizing that. Like, I right, this ain't for me, but if y'all fuck with it, cool. We'll we'll see how long it lasts. Real, real, real quick, Miss Dubies, did you see? Did you see that tweet about? Would you take fifty thousand dollars and not listen to Little Baby anymore? And someone said, "I'm doing it for free right now." <laughs> no, <laughs> you're the first person I thought of when I seen that. You would have thought that was my Nigga said, Nigga said, Nigga said, "I'm doing it for free right now." Shit. No. Okay. Send me that shit. No, that was funny <laughs> as fuck. I was like, "Damn, this is definitely." It. Yo, I do not. Mm-mm. She doing it. We, bro. A lot of people are doing it for free right now, but yeah. like that's a different conversation. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? No, absolutely. <laughs> a that lot was, of people. Are that's doing funny. So I, I, I wish I saw that because I would have quoted it with the pod page and tagged her. Bro, yep. it was crazy, bro. Like me, I'm leading the movement. <laughs> it was funny as hell. But yeah, so we'll see what Caribou does. Um, next up, Dochi's Nissan Altima Swamp Sessions. Uh, featuring appearances from her TDE family. J-Rock was there. Absol was there. Isaiah Rashad was there. Dochi went off. As always. Dochi rapped. Rapped her ass off. That was fire. That was super hard. She's a real artist. Absolutely. Yeah. Like, uh, let's just, let's just, let's just say that now. Mm-hmm. And so everybody can just, like, understand, like, the, 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 the level and stature that we're talking about. She's a real artist. She's not fucking around. She's not mm-hmm. playing around. She wants to be here for a, for a long time, and she wants to have a lasting impact on her fan and fan base and grow it. Mm-hmm. I mean, I, I I really don't have that much more to say about it other than that she's, like, serious, bro. Yeah, I spent like, a day with Dochi when I was at Rolling Stone for Meta. She's dead ass. And, <laughs> like Will like, said, like, she is really about that, like, mm-hmm. her um, breakout single, I always butcher it with the yucky... Yeah, Black guess, fruit, yeah. yeah, yeah. I always fuck up the name, but I knew she was spe- special since that went viral. Mm-hmm. I was like, all right, this girl is really like, and I also knew we were around the same age based on like the topics Ooh. and her interests and stuff. So that's why I really liked her. But she's very talented. Like I want, I want to see more for Dochi. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I'm I'm looking at the records now. Like well, what it is. Featuring Kodak, uh, the anxiety feature she did on Sleepy Hollow's joint, yeah. Persuasive with Scissor, right. like do, don't you get joint? Remember her uh, BT Award performance, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, her feature on um, Isaiah Rashad's song, yep. like she is really that girl. So yep. I don't know what's missing or what she needs, or you know what's coming, bro, for yeah. her. What? And it might not be like soon or like whatever, but like she's, uh, I can see her winning a Grammy. High for key. sure, like, like, for like, sure. and and that that I feel like that's gonna be not the next step, but maybe the step after, because because you're right, she does need more. She just needs more like relevant and like respect throughout everybody, because like people like us respect it, but yeah. like, right? I need we we need the public to like really respect it, yeah. and understand it like hasn't what's connected going on, yet. like how. Yeah, they haven't really like they see it like oh she's dope, and then like go and that's on. It. Yeah, it's yeah. like okay, whatever. Scroll, but like right. a lot of people like yeah. haven't really tapped in for real. And yeah, I feel it kind of like reminds me of like Tierra Whack. Mm-hmm. Like I mean, yeah. everyone knows Tierra's dope, mm-hmm. but Tierra hasn't just like, necessarily gone like like mm-hmm. like she's she's known popular, but not like popped popped. Yeah, it's like to yeah. where it's like it's among exactly, the exactly that. Yeah, so I mean, some that. of these things take time. Like I I, I first found out about Dochi in like 2022. Like when when did you first? Like around like. Like post pandemic, okay. Like yeah, maybe twenty twenty one, twenty twenty two. I feel like it was post pandemic for a lot of people. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, like I wasn't hip early, but 
I do, I don't know. I think colorism could probably play a part into it as well. You know, that's always a topic that's raised because the songs are dope. She got that collab with um JT. Mm-hmm. Um, she goes into different pockets, yeah. you know, fired, blends bro. different genres. She's fired, bro. Her singing isn't too shabby, mm-hmm. you know, she's really fire. And even when she dropped on um, what it is. That same formula Victoria Monet did like shortly after, right. and then it worked for Victoria Monet. So I was just like, "Damn, like you know, that could have been it." And she had a viral song too. So I'm just like, "What? What's missing?" You know what yeah. I be thinking sometimes, bro? Especially with an artist that is that talented, like she is, that can do so many different things. Sometimes when you can do so many different things, so good for the consumer wise, it's hard for them to like hone in on like. Oh, like, okay, so, like, this is, like, your sound. Like, this is, like, I feel like she does so many good things and so many, like, so many good things yeah. music-wise that she can do these pockets, do this pocket, this pocket. Fans just kind of don't know how to, like, I don't know, like, not categorize her because I feel like that's a, I feel like that's bad when people do that anyways, but low-key, consumers and fans need to do that shit. Like, that, how they just, like, yeah. they need, they need shit in a little box and, like, put, like, Okay, so like she's making this type of music. So I just think sometimes, you know, especially artists like her, she's like so talented mm-hmm. that sometimes people just don't know how to put it into the put it into the right. Which makes sense. That's box. fair. Because I, I think yeah. about my listening, like for like I Bryson Tiller, for example, he raps and sings. I go to him for his singing. Like mm-hmm. if I want to hear rapping, I go to a, a rapper who I think is better and makes better rap music. Correct. Um, if I want to hear like elite R and B. And as a rapper who raps and sings, like Lil Durk, for example, I don't want to hear Lil Durk sing. So I'm I'm, I'm, I'm going to go to Usher for, for actual R&B. And so I, I think that's a good point. I think some artists have shown, like, Tyler, the creator, is a great example. Mm-hmm. He started out just rapping, doing weird shit, rapping. And then over time, he added more to his arsenal with, like, Igor and other shit mm-hmm. like that. Like, you you progressively expand as right. opposed to just, if you give give everyone everything early on, then they're kind of spoiled. And it's like, you got to ease, there's no like journey to go on. You got to yeah. ease them into it. Facts. You got to yeah. like, you're yeah. like, okay, I can do this and I can do this. And yeah. I can do this. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. So that's, that's a, that's a good point. But I, I do think Doji's incredible. Like great rapper, great song maker, great, great melodics, like just very versatile. And it's kind of crazy. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. yeah. Like she has the package. Yeah. yeah. She's... And so it's crazy to like sit and say someone's versatility could be the thing holding them back. Cause it's like, this is, this is the era of versatility. Like everyone, it's not, it's not on her. It's it? more, yeah, it's, it, it's, well, it's it's the era of everyone trying to be versatile. <laughs> now, not everyone's good at it, but everyone tries yeah. to do it. Like every artist tries to keep an Afrobeat song. <laughs> now these all these niggas trying to do house stuff. Like it's the era of, like just like in terms of click, like people clicking your name. Oh shit, this nigga did a song with K Trinata, and then he also did one with fucking uh, Burner Boy. You know what I'm saying? Like niggas yeah. trying to be versatile. Yeah, heavy on trying. Yeah. <laughs> So heavy on it, but no. Nah, so salute <laughs> to Dochi on the Nissan Altima Swamp Sessions, super fire. Um, did, did definitely rooting for you. Definitely rooting for you. Would love to hear more from you. Continuing with this, uh, women rapper thing. Uh, Lotto announced Sugar Honey Ice Tea coming <laughs> August 9th uh, with a promotional trailer, which was ATL themed. Um, played a couple snippets of of new records in, in in the trailer, and yeah, it's finally album time for Lotto. It's been over two years since uh, Seven Seven Seven. Lotto's definitely ascended in stardom. Um, had some big, big records over the years. Mm-hmm. And, yeah, has done a good job staying present. So how y'all, how do I feel about the trailer? How you feeling about Lotto's upcoming album? It's been up, coming in like two weeks now, yeah. I love Lotto. I hate having, like, good interactions with certain artists because then I get real super biased. So, <laughs> yeah, I love me some Lotto. Mm-hmm. You're not going to hear me saying too many bad things about her, yeah. unless it's true. Yeah, but um, I'm real excited, mm-hmm. real excited. Um, I can't wait for it to drop, and I love how she always reps her hometown, yeah. just like me. So yeah, so. yeah, um, yeah, bro. Over the over like the past, I was I shouldn't say six months, but like the past three months, damn near two months. I became like the one of the biggest Lotto fans, <laughs> like just yeah. just in general, just like 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 she like. She got it, bro. Yeah. And you know, I, 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 I've known about her for a long time when she was even. I forgot what's the name that she used to go right. by. Mulatto, right? Mulatto. Yeah, Mulatto. Yeah. I knew, I knew her back then, and I knew her because we had sessions down in Atlanta. So it, it'd be say be times where we would run into her and her her team and her camp. You know, going throughout 
through going through um studio sessions and just like bumping into her and just just see how much she's progressed and see where she's at today is kind of crazy. I feel like she was like a like a five star high school prospect and people were just like in Atlanta like eh we're like eh, is it gonna blow is it gonna pop is it gonna pop and it and it finally popped and like to see where she's at now um is fire calling it sugar honey iced tea aka shit <laughs> is fire too because you know what like let's keep it up let's yeah let's keep it up I like let's, it. let's keep this shit going like, like y'all that. niggas y'all niggas going at it let's keep going at it that's what we doing man this is rap like the fuck like and it's not too many times i root against new york <laughs> it's not see, too many times see i'm not i'm not like her i'm not rooting against new york i just want to see i just want to see a good fight i don't know if y'all ever seen that gif of uh joe Noah when the niggas are arguing he's about to clap oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hyping it up. that's me that's me i'm just nah. i'm just clapping on the side like yeah get it in niggas get it in nah. that's me I'm i don't really like ice why are you agitating oh, See, mm-hmm. see, she's swinging see, up, see. shorty. And this how you like, know, this how you know it's lit. This how you know it's lit. So for real though. yeah, um, yeah, it should be cool. I, I, I fuck with a lot of. And we've been tapped in. Since she's the a beautiful rap woman game. too. Yeah. I'm sorry, yeah. she's gorgeous. <laughs> since the rap game, <laughs> she's been really putting in work since she was a little girl, and yet another artist that truly wants it. Mm-hmm. So I think that's what mm-hmm. separates her from the rest because she wants it. Yeah, been at it for a long time. Like for a long I remember time. when she was. Asking her dad for permission to curse in her raps. So, mm-hmm. shout out Salado. Yeah, I, I definitely got on the journey late, but like seven 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 did it for me. Like, and that was when she had big energy. Um, just a cu- cu- couple really good records, like in a row. I was like, oh, she yeah. doesn't make bad music. I put sunshine bro. on my morning um, playlist. Yeah, she don't make Childish bad music. Yeah, yeah, she makes really great music. She does. She can do the melody. She can actually like really rap. She, she can, she can like, really, really rap. That's why I don't understand why ISIS is. is <laughs> yeah, bro. That's what, that's what I'm saying. Like, bro, like, uh, I, if, what Mr. Beast is saying right now is the same shit I be thinking in the back of my head. It's like, do you really want to play with this woman? Because she's all friendly, girls, girl. Because mm-hmm. like, she will put you in a blender, my nigga. <laughs> like, she can really rap, rap. Like, yeah. she yeah. comes from that, nigga. Yeah. Like, yeah. Be careful, bro. Yeah. And, and there was a don't time. step on a landmine. Nigga. Over the last like year or so, where Lotto kept was pretty consistent with singles, like Sunday Service recently. Um, trying to think of some other joints she dropped last. She dropped a couple joints. Put it on the floor. Put it on the floor. Uh, Cardi, of course, huge record. Huge record. Um, arguably one of the songs of the summer last year. It was my song of the summer. And then she popped out with with the K pop joint. Um, she had oh, yeah, that, that other cute. one, Lottery, which was more like pop I love type joints. Like she's 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 lottery. been doing the features. Yeah. She's been on a little feature run as yeah. well. She's... Back outside with Anicia. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, so there was she's another been... one I forgot. You're right. You're absolutely right. Like she's been pretty consistent with the loose. She had that joint with um, was it Huncho? No, I don't know. Fuck, it's, it's gonna bother me. But right, all, all that but to she's say, been killing it. <laughs> she she she's been she's been pretty like consistent with the releases. Not all of them, like, had crazy motion, but right. she's just become such a big name that anything she does gets a lot of attention, and people, she's always on people's mind. She does a good job staying present. Oh, she also did a Peaches and Eggplant remix with Sexy Red. Yes. She was kind of hard. I'm no, go she had a, a feature was, run that- That shit was nasty was, Yo, we need fuck. to focus on feature runs nasty maybe ass. one of these I'm episodes, because a couple artists did a few. Cardi had, like, the highlight feature run, yeah. but there were a couple feature runs from, like, 2019 to now that yeah. went- under the absolutely under the table, I love it. Yeah, you guys will get a feature run episode very soon. But right. um, yeah, I'm I'm excited. I think this is the right time, um, especially with this this space within women's rap where it's like, obviously, there's one person who holds the crown and and it is the outlier. She's kind of in her own world, but <laughs> the crown for like today, it's still up for grabs in my mind. And so it's like, who who's gonna take it? We saw a great album from JT. An, an album we got into later, I don't really know if, if, if that's crown worthy, but there's a lot of different, you know, acts right now trying to, you know, establish themselves and set themselves apart. And so I think she's dropping at the right time to to really establish that. So I'm looking forward to it. Definitely looking forward to it. Um, She got interviewed by Billboard recently. And of course they asked her about Ice Spice. They said, would you battle? The, they asked her about the Drake and Kendrick beef. And then they asked if she would battle Ice Spice. And her exact quote was, <clears throat> I mean this in the most understanding way. Mm-hmm. I'm a fan of music. I'm not one of them lyrical only, anything else is bullshit people. There's so many subgenres that I'm a fan of, like mosh pit type music. When Drake is in his melodic bag, I like that type shit, and all of it is still hip hop. If I was to do a battle, it would have to be with somebody I feel like I'm going to go tit for tat with. 
I really don't mean it as shade. Would she even want to do that? I feel like she's doing her and her lane. It's two different types of vibes. I don't even think she gives me like, oh, she wants to engage in actual rap beef. Everybody going to take the little jabs in the music, but and it's not even that serious to me. I feel like you should do that. Continue to. But as far as actual whole diss records to each other, I don't think she would even want to do that. I feel like, would it even make sense? It wouldn't. You're not wrong, queen. I feel like she said a lot there. She, she kept it pretty political, pretty polite, but it was like, essentially, you don't want this problem. Yeah. <laughs> you, right. don't, you don't want this problem. <laughs> and she don't. I don't want to see that because, like, Rory already put the timer on her, mm -hmm. and he kind of wasn't really too wrong. So now, like, if you engage in the beef and Lotto smokes you like she is fully capable of doing, mm -hmm. It, it's just not going to be a good look, especially after, like, the way the album was received. Mm -hmm. And it's just... What did... My bad. What did Rory say? You just, uh, you, you remember, remember last summer oh, when, yeah, when he put yeah, the countdown yeah, on yeah, ice? Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. That was, like, right around when, like, Delhi was her highest charting solo But she song. got lucky with that one. No one was, like, a lucky, like, all right, you... Mm. She got lucky with that one. I, I feel like that one had a pretty organic reception to it. But it was also at a time when we were just like, all right, how many times can she do this? Is she going to do it again? And then she did do it again. So sure. I do feel like she got lucky with that one, but <laughs> she's not getting lucky again. Yeah, none of these songs have, have had no shit. None, none, yeah. none of them. Yeah. So you're absolutely right about that. Um, and speaking of, we can just jump right into Ice Spice. Uh, she finally dropped her debut album, Y2K. Uh, 10 songs, 23 minutes, features from Central C, Travis Scott, um, and Gunna. Let's lead with love. What do we like or love about Y2K? I, I mean, I like, I like that it's, um... <laughs> Why did niggas so see? I mean, Armand, I think, um... Oh, you probably saw me say this, and I think I said this in the chat that we were in, too. Um, you know... I got wind and kind of heard a little bit before, and I, and I, and I said, like, she's going to take a risk mm -hmm. on, on a lot of these songs. A lot of this shit's going to be a lot different. And I said, people are either going to love it or hate it. You did say that you once people, on the pod, too. Yeah, 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 yeah. Facts, 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 facts. Well, so, Google's been saying that for months. I mean, yeah. I mean, I mean, that's what, that's, that's the, you know, that's the wind. I, that's the statement that was told to me, and then after hearing some of it, too, that's a statement I told myself. I, I, I too. fully understood. So like now, like yeah, and now hearing it fully, I fully get it. Um, I like that. You know, I like that she took a risk and and tried some new stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, I like the I like the beats. I think Riot went crazy. I mean, they sound like glow gleam beats in like crazy like two thousand eleven Chief Keef type of like Nicky coded type beats. But <laughs> yeah, that's where. That's where I'm about to. Uh, I like that. I guess she was authentically herself. Yeah. Facts. Um, you know, she has a formula that she sticks to. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, to did echo, you, did you go to the release party, or you was already? Yeah, I was already gone. You was already yeah. Yeah, yeah I was DC. in DC, Facts. but um. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't. I didn't go. Yeah. We, <clears throat> we still showing love. Um. I'm 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 gonna give my positive statements, which will be pretty short as well. Um, I too like that she tried different things, different vocal inflections, um, slightly different flows. Um, yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah, it's like some of it is like, yeah, bro. Some of it is, some of it is like catchy, like little like cute catchy shit. Mm -hmm. But it's like for like maybe like twenty seconds, like maybe like. 10 seconds you might see you might say something got that check on me like it's like some like mm -hmm. like some some clean like something for like it's like she's usually better at that I yeah i was i was really confused like i i, I saw I'm i saw a pitchfork i'm better. trying the pitchfork trying. ranked the album 7.6 which the is same the same they gave mr morale and the big steppers they ranked it higher than like we don't trust you that they ranked who did it? Was it Alphonse? No, it was... Uh, it was uh, <laughs> Fine, that nigga. Where's he at? I, I want to say her name might have been Vivian something. I don't, I don't okay. want to be irresponsible. But um, I know Alphonse. He playing. He, Alphonse Alphonse playing. do be wild. And, he but that's, that's my guy, though. I, I fuck with him, too, actually. Yeah, he actually has... Yeah, he's that's cool. a different... Story. But, yeah. <laughs> nothing he... like. The, I like two songs. I liked 
And one of them was a single. Did it first, Central C. That one's growing on me a lot. I actually really a lot. Yeah, so I, I actually liked that one like... when it dropped. And I like the Gunna song a lot too. Like a lot of people were saying that's that where one she's too. using a, a different voice. A lot like, of people say that one too. I, I believe, I don't know if I heard it from you or someone, but that was originally supposed to be Cardi on that song. Uh, Playboy Cardi. I know, and I was like, honestly, crazy. hearing that, I, I could have heard Cardi or Uzi on there. Gunna did his thing. I, I like it. I like it a lot. Um, I expected something a little more sensual, and I think I, I try to do that, but it's also like a kind of, like the beat is like really crazy. It's like, a wild, I don't know how to I mean, describe the it. sex appeal also isn't in the room. <sighs> yeah, I mean, the, she's a beautiful girl, mm-hmm. you but know, with a fat butt. Something's missing, huh? The sex appeal is yeah, not the there. Even as fat as it used to be. Something's missing. Nah, huh? I'm advocate. I'm an advocate for the slim, healthy booty. Oh no, because it's, 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 it's still, it's still there. It's still there. It's just not as not there as much as it used to be. It's just you know the body fat is just you know. Small, listen, the fat butt is still fat butt. <laughs> it's still heavy. All right, it's still heavy, you feel it's me? It's, but... it's, it's not a capital PH. Right. <laughs> <laughs> fat. No, I'm button, um, yeah. Um, I didn't like when I heard a lot of, like, Nikki lines. Mm-hmm. Mm. Um, I can't even remember them, and I didn't want to re-listen to, you know, get them to get what it was. Um, But I heard her say something about having sons. Yes, yes, she did. And I, like, I was just so uninterested. Like, girl, yeah, please. And it was, it was interesting because Pitchfork described it as ge- uh, genuinely exciting and refreshing. I was like, there's not much refreshing on here. Like, the Travis Scott song to me sounded like a Princess Diana replica, but just with Travis on it. Like, the same kind of cadence, the video same kind so of chorus too. structure. Like, the video was so awkward. I didn't even watch it. That little clip turned me off <laughs> with the grapes. Oh, the grapes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That, that clip turned me off. And so that shit was weird. For me, it's just like you you experimented a little bit, but you didn't go far enough. So a lot of these songs sound like songs that you've made, but you made them better in the past. Yes. So I don't need new, worse versions of um, things that I got. And if yes. this is going to be your She's a Star album with these star features, like you, you got to go bigger. Like she's. She's, she worked with Taylor Swift. She worked with Nicki. She worked with Pink Panther. She had a song with Rema. Like, you have slight crossover appeal. I, I wouldn't have been mad at more crossover type features. But if you're going to keep it more, like, authentic to the New York sound, but then also kind of you know, dabble in Chicago drill, like, call some of them up. You know C- what? Call you, up Chief Keef. You know, call up K Flock. Call you know, up um, Kyle Rich and all them. Like, I'm going to be honest. You know what happened, bro? Go ahead. I'll let you. Go you ahead. said Riot killed it, but I think she needs to work with other producers. I mean, she does, but like that's what what you're about to like what you just said. I'm about to piggyback off of, anyways. You know what happened, bro? <laughs> she waited too. She waited too late to do that because when she came out, <clears throat> when she came out, you know it was Munch and like that was. It was it was New York, yeah. But it it crossed over, and when it crossed over, she went into that. Oh, I'm doing I'm doing features with Taylor Swift. I'm doing you know she 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 bumped. She tried to you know what she did. She tried to jump over over that realm of of of, 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 of jump, jump and she did and she did because like, if people remember, she did like one song with she did one song with like I forgot it was like some New York niggas, but it was like. One song. Then after that, it was dumb. It was no New York shit. No New oh, York yeah, shit. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it was a song with, with Sk- Skilly Bang, right? It was like and Skilly Bang and some uh, yeah, some yeah, other yeah. New York nigga. I think it was. I don't know who was the it fuck J. it was. I think it was. Ji was on that song. You feel yep, me? Yep. So she That's did crazy. that. Niggas complete. Forgot about that song. Completely around <laughs> Yo. She did that on purpose. They did it on purpose, bro. So she went into the she went into the e girl pop girl rap girl wave too soon too soon and jumped in and she she rolled that wave for a minute rolled that wave for a, a long time. And then when shit kind of started to, oh, I want to, I want to switch it. I want to go back. That's why she, like, why you think she hopped on for the for sure remix? Mm-hmm. And how how much of that was a bigger, it a bigger was. moment for her, yeah. for her, and how it almost, it did, bro, it damn near rolled out her. It started to roll out her album. Mm-hmm. Yeah. She rocked pink. She did everything. You see yeah. how the, the give me the light video? She's all pink and the tour everything. Got soon after. Yeah, soon yeah. after. You know. And then you see the cover is super New York based. It's every it's all that stuff. 
Uh, it was I, like her saying, "Hey guys, remember I'm, I'm, I'm from I'm, New York. I'm still from New York. I'm still a Bronx bitch." Yeah, and it's like you just it's, you just waited too long, bro. You, yeah. you 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 missed that wave, and that and 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 to piggyback off what you're saying about Riot, it's like yeah, bro, you should have been you should have been hopping on 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 beats that were from from someone else or from New York nick niggas that like you know got a sound or whatever you know yeah. everybody when she hopped on for sure everybody was like. Damn, I want to hear on this type of shit. Mm-hmm. I want to hear on this type of shit. It don't make no sense how long it took. You're right. Like yeah. everything you said, you was spitting just now. Like, yeah. like it 10 just took out of too 10. long, bro. It yeah. just took too long. You 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 tried to double back too late. Yeah. yeah. And like I ain't even gonna front. She wasn't prepared for any of that. And I'm not sure she ever will be because we always talk about like star appeal. And I'm just not sure if like we don't even know her personality. Like, yeah. we know nothing. If you're going to ride that, like, mm-hmm. pop girl wave, mm-hmm. you that, really got to yeah. be gotta a bad yourself. bitch. Yeah. And, like, a leader of bad bitches. Like, yeah. how Nikki claimed that shit. Like, you have to be... Like, she she said it on the album that she's a leader of bad bitches, but it's like, no, you are a baddie, mm-hmm. My but nigga, you ain't leading. Mm-hmm. My nigga, it was... I'm talking about really maybe t- a year and a half or maybe two years after much, she's doing songs with Taylor Swift in MetLife Stadium. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. It was Three so nights soon. in a row. Like, you know how crazy that is? It was like, people were just like, his tour. yeah, people were just like, what in the hell? Like, yeah. okay. Like, yeah. I even thought the Nicki feature was a bit yeah, of a That shit was crazy, bro. Because if Very people early. thought Sexy Red wasn't qualified for one, what made I Ice Spice qualified for I remember, one? Yeah. I literally remember watching her Watching, like, just watching it unfold and just seeing how fast it unfold, and people were just asking me, like, "Yo, did you think it was gonna be like this?" So I was, you could even, I was like, "I mean, no, nobody but like, did. she's doing, like, yeah, nobody did, like, she she's didn't. doing shit like that's yeah. like, <laughs> she's doing shit that niggas wait 15, 20 years in the game to do, right? Because it, it was just like a, a switch flipped, like we got Munch, we Boom. got Bikini Bottom, we got Boom. In Her Mood, Boom. and then she was on uh, The Boys a Liar. She, yeah. like January that blew up so crazy. Dropped her EP. I feel like I feel like they wasn't ready for that. Then like two months later, she it's, it's Nikki's. Yeah, they, they went oh, she crazy. Cooked. She, 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 went she crazy. cooked. She cooked. They but went like, nuts on that. Within two months, it was like these domestic New York type bops to mm-hmm. cross over worldwide. People like whoa, whoa, what? Like, like it was dope to see. I was mm-hmm. happy for. Her. I fucked with her. But I'm just like it was like looking back in hindsight. It's like mm. it was unprecedented, bro. It was some shit we the, never, we didn't see. The machine behind her has done a great job. Did a great job that rookie year. But now it's like the, the success and the skill, like the skill's not catching up to the level of, of the success. And so now we're like the microscope is on you. And we're really seeing like, hmm, these lights getting bright and you're not, you're not really stepping up to the where you need to step getting, up. The lights no. are getting bright, my boy. The, they, they are brighter than ever, fucking fluorescent. <laughs> like <it's, laughs> shit is in your eye and we we not it's so yeah i and truthfully i didn't go into this album with crazy expectations All but right. listening to it i got to track six i was like okay cool did it first i love this song i looked at the rest i was like those two singles i didn't like what do y'all think our first first week number is going to be i don't think about that know. type of stuff i mean i don't either she but might I just hit like a it. might do like 80k maybe you think so maybe they might put some money behind it for yeah. it to look that way. Yeah. You know? 80 would be a success. That's, that's a nice success. Maybe like 60, 60 to 80. I don't know. It's, it's, I don't know. I mean, the thing about female rap stars, too, is that, like, the girls and the girls, meaning gay guys, <laughs> decide who is going to be the next female rap star. Mm-hmm. And if you don't have, like, a large, like, gay fan base as a female rapper, you're not really gonna, you know, do what you need to do. Like, that's how Meg is able to be as successful as she is. Like, that's why Nikki is where she's at. Like, a lot... I saw a tweet that said, um, Nikki provided a safe space for gay men in Mm hip-hop. And she did. And anyone who creates that safe space for them, like, the way um, gay men and women, the way we consume music is, like, insane and yeah. we're gonna be the ones to create that female rap star and I don't think Ice Spice has that support behind her. Yeah. Like she got some young kids mm-hmm. like but that's it. Yeah. yeah. No, it's um it's a really interesting case. But yeah, this and I think just the lack of like Y two K, we hear that we think of something. We think of an era. We think of you kind of channeling nostalgia. 
you hear the music, nothing about it feels two thousands. I think that's another reason, like why the marketing should have just been a bit better. Because, like we mm-hmm. discussed last week, I think she was just trying to play on her birthday, yeah, yeah, and not necessarily Y two K. But then she kept on doing little things like linking up with Paris Hilton mm-hmm. and then taking the picture with the digital camera. Yeah, I, I think she, I saw her with a sidekick in some pictures, right? Or something too so. the baby fat ensemble yeah. at the Grammys. So it was just like if you were gonna do that, she definitely should have leaned into it sonically. All the way in. Yeah. yeah. Um. Did you, did you yeah, see her her stream with uh Kaisenat? Yeah. I mean, I saw that clip where he asked her to freestyle, <laughs> and she delivered her freestyle. Yeah. It, it it was like this is what you should be doing, but you got to bring the personality for it. And that's I, what made me feel like she's not a star. Yeah, like that stream. The clips I saw, I didn't. The get twerk was weak. Anything from her. Yeah, the it, twerk it, was it, weak. It, it ain't really moved me like that yeah. at all. Like if yeah. you're not Megan, I don't want to see that shit for real, man. Thanks. <laughs> Word. 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 <laughs> okay, Lonnie. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, for real though, like weak ass twerk. Like you could have at least had something memorized, sister. It it just it, it it didn't move me, but and so and it, it just seemed like an attempt to regain like the audience, like like That's like, what I was about like to you say, send niggas bro. to Kai Sanat so they can yeah. be part of those funny viral clips. But but you got to give something. Like Kevin Hart went and gave something. Drewski gave something. They're Tyler naturals. gave they're, yeah, something. They're they're Tyler naturals. Tyler with her accent and all that. She she came, gave yeah. personality, dance, all that. Twerking is not gonna do it. We it's need like, more. It's it, it, it's it's like what you said, bro. They send to the Kai Sanat stream. They know there's a bunch of kid boys, niggas watching it. Yes. All she got to do is turn around and twerk. So that fat ass. And, and niggas going, ah. It's like, yeah, it wasn't to me, enough. like, that doesn't, yeah, it doesn't do nothing. It wasn't like, enough. like, it's like, okay. Let's not forget, though, she was discovered from the Erica Banks Busted Challenge. This isn't someone who was on the rap game trying <laughs> to get a deal mm-hmm. from Jermaine Dupri. Yeah. <laughs> you feel me? Like, this is, she lucked up. And she got a nice deal that she's able to get paid generously from her yeah. musical efforts. And she's going to do just enough to, you know, keep things afloat. But, yeah, it's giving one trick pony. And did, did, I, I don't know if I've, I'm alone. This Doesn't it kind of suck to see another person who, like, and I don't want to have, like, a moratorium about, about a career and say it's over. But, like, I feel like so many people, we, we get introduced to them. We fuck with them. They give us hope. And I, I wasn't saying she was going to be a, a long-term, yeah, long-lasting, <laughs> timeless superstar. I'm just like, damn, like, already I'm already like, mm, Yo, eh. I can't like, bank on nobody. Because, that, it sucks. And you don't know how long they're going to last. Like, when I thought um, Asian Doll was going to be something, mm. like, when, like before she linked up with Bad Baby in the very, very, very beginning, I was like, oh, this girl, she's raw. I think she's going to be something. And then, like, I would just bank on people, Roddy Rich, so many other artists, and I'm just like, you know what? I'm gonna just see what they do, bro. I mean, it's tough, bro. It's it tough. Is. It's yeah. tough. Everybody can't. Everybody can't go. Everybody yeah. can't make it. If it was that easy, everybody would. True. Yeah. There's it's reasons why we have. There's reason why it's like categories. It's like, oh, like you're on, like then there's stars, and then it's like superstars. Like mm-hmm. it's like, yeah. it's for real, bro. This shit is not. Yeah, this shit is not. Again, you gotta be chosen. Blessed and highly favored, I mean, for she, real. She, she nigga. Song, how, how like, can I lose? I'm already chose. Yeah, like. I mean, facts. <laughs> I, I, I get it. Yeah. I understand. Yeah, I get I'm, it. It's just tough. <sighs> I feel like she's just hit. She's plateauing. She's hitting. She's hitting that 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 wall that mm-hmm. the next ones break through to. Just leak the sex tapes, sis. Wow. Oh, Jesus um, Christ. Just go ahead. All right. Holy. So let's, let's get to our Holy quote about shit. Lotto from <laughs> Rolling Stone. Um, she just did a cover story, Rolling Stone. And so um, she said, I feel like if we ever spoke and I asked her, what's the issue? It'd be like a blank stare. <laughs> It'd really be no issue whatsoever, especially for me. I can understand a friendly competition, but I feel like at this point, it's just a joke that she's just dragged out and it's just not even funny. Like, bro. Thank you, the shit is from January. They're going to post a piece of shit cake to announce something that's good news for you, but it is kind of a compliment because you're taking something that's supposed to be a fun moment for you and you're making it about me again. You know, I don't like when people don't know how to throw shade properly. Or where'd you feel like she lacked? That shit was corny. Really? Everything that she said was lame as hell. Like, Lotto chewed her up with her one quote, like, 
she did not read down with that quote at all. Like, girl, <laughs> you started it, one. So you can't really say how far someone can take it or when they can respond or when they cannot respond. And it's so funny that she said, I feel like if she was to ask Lotta what would be the problem, she'll have a blank stare. I feel like that's how she would react. Like, mm. literally, like, just blank. Mm. Like, you know, I don't... I don't know. Maybe I'm just triggered too because some pussy ass bitch did the same thing to me. Nope. Start some problems that she couldn't back up. Mm. So it's like, yeah, no, don't do that. You from New York or nah? It's 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 a little embarrassing at this point. Yeah, I, I low key like that response was like everything she just everything Miss Two Bees just said. Like I feel the same way just in boy farm or men farm, <laughs> and it's just like yeah, it's like because we stay out of women's business. Yeah, I mean, I, <laughs> as they I, I, should. I, yeah, we do. I mean, but like everything she just said is like. That response she was just like... She did not eat. She yeah, didn't read that response, down. That response was just like, whatever, I guess. Like, whatever. Like, it was a bunch of like... You know what that response sounded like? It sounded like that 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 little, like, that meme when people, like, send, like, a a, a paragraph and be like, yeah, that's cool. I'm not reading all that shit. Though. I'm not reading all of that shit. <laughs> but, like, but I'm sorry. Or, yeah. or I'm happy that happened. I'm happy that happened. <laughs> Facts. That's what that response sounded like. <laughs> no, for real. <coughs> it's Girl, like, bro, whatever, bro. Just quit while you ahead, because Lotto was sparing you a lot, and she's being graceful. Just yeah, bow just out like, now. Hey, let's just, let's just. I thought it, it was bro. funny that the ice tried to position it as if like she's living rent free in Lotto's head, and it's like, but yeah. Lotto been been kind of like coming at you, like. In response to the things you've been doing. Nigga, she just named her album after your shit. Yeah, like, you you low-key alley-ooped her to have this moment. And if she comes on that album crazy, if the first song is like... if. You know she is. I know. But if that first song song is like on some like... On some like Young Dolph um, (laughs) fucking... uh, Whatever that song is. Whatever the song is. The fucking... um, The shit where he was... uh, Talking about being shot and shit. If she comes like that mm. on that bitch, the first song, yeah. it might get critical you for ice, like critical condition and stadium w- pulse a hundred. Well, one of the snippets in the trailer was a uh, scissor was on there, so that means the the, the, the numbers is coming. <laughs> the number like yeah, hey, hey, if a lotto got to have a bigger first week than ice. I mean, ain't no oh. I hate that that's also it's, part of it's conversations actual, it's now. It's actual. That is a thing. It is a thing. I was going to say, if the music's better, it doesn't really matter. Let me look like, up 777's seven, seven, first one. Oh it is a thing. Niggas be on that shit. But, yeah, I don't know. Like, Lotto, this is the first time I've ever rooted against New York. Like, I just wish yeah, Spice seven, would just seven, be 777 seven only did 23K first week. When did it come out again? That was uh, March 2022. But she, she's obviously grown since then. Grammy nominations. Um, so... We'll see. I love me some Lotto. Absolutely, me too, me too. Well, one of the most fun interviews I've, I've ever done. She's a really great. Same. I had a great, and I went viral on TikTok. She um gave me the exclusive about her BBL. Okay. Yeah. There you go. Gave me the exclusive about that. There I mean, go. even though it was obvious, yeah. I was the first person that she verbally confirmed it to. Mm. So that's what's that. Shout out to the doctor. You did a good job. Anyway, uh, great so... job. I ain't gonna lie. Oh. Y'all need to go to Lotto's doctor. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so in May, we were promised summer vibes from one Aubrey Drake Graham. And this past week, we got them in the form of two records on Gordo's album, Diamante, uh, Sideways and Healing. I interviewed Gordo last week. Shout out to him. Really great dude. Um, really fun interview. And yeah, so Diamante was a, I believe it was a, on Spotify cooperates. It was a 16 track album features from, of course, Drake, T-Pain. Larry June, Leon Bridges, a couple couple um artists in like the Latin trap, la, Latino, Latina music, Nicki Nicole, Maluma, um, Young Dolph posthumous feature on there. So a lot of a very mixed bag of artists here. How how, how are we feeling about the house music vibes, the oonts oonts, fist pump? Um, it's fun music. It's definitely an easy listen. Mm-hmm. Um I love that Sesh was featured on there. He's mm-hmm. a Panamanian Latin trap artist. I That's was fine. like, all right, you know, That's representation. Fine. Yeah. And um, we could have did without the Drake tracks. So I'm just get into it. Wow, you, you ain't like him? It sounded like the worst version of something that we already heard that was good already, like I you said. I use my words against me. Like, <laughs> <laughs> it's just, like, Drake, We've you, you could get in this bag and do it real well. But mm. this one is just like, I don't want to revisit it again. Yeah, um, I liked it. I always like what Gordo does or 
What's the other name he goes by? He, he was uh, he used to be Carnage. Yeah, Carnage. Yeah, and Carnage got hits. If you remember that Uzi Ferg and and song what back in yeah, yeah, crazy right? Hit, come on now. So I fuck with I fuck with Gordo Gordo a lot. Um, the Drake tracks are, are cool, but whatever too. But you know what I really want to talk about, and I know it might be a little bit off talk to- off topic, but that Drake. And Yachty leak. I'm glad, my nigga. I'm glad you said this. S O D, money gang, bro. He, bro, that shit is. That's why I said this shit is funny, bro. Niggas love Drake, bro. Mm-hmm. They oh. really love him, bro. bro. That, that song, song is, is going crazy. That song's a heater, right now, bro. Mm-hmm. It's. I, I saw a TikTok of some, so, of some white newscasters, bro. They're going, going to it. They're going dumb to it, bro. Yeah. Because that shit is. It's just. It's just good music. It's good. Leaked. It's good. I, I I didn't I didn't love Yachty's part on it. Yeah, I didn't get Never to his do. part. Honestly, pack them up. And niggas might not see my vision here. I tweeted it. I didn't get too much engagement, so I'm gonna say it on the pod again. Recycle <laughs> it. That pocket was great for Black. I feel like Black would smoke that that cadence that mm-hmm. that the type of production pocket. I feel like Black would go crazy on that. Mm-hmm. And I've seen him and Drake like comment on each other's pictures randomly and stuff. So they cool, but they haven't worked together yet. And if two of my favorite artists came together on that record, it would have been crazy. But you're right. Super Soak, S.O.D., whatever the fuck it's called. Goodness gracious. Mm-hmm. That shit fire. Um, what do you say? Um, uh, rainy Days, His and Hers, Matching Coats. Need that. I can't wait to Matching caption coats. that. I, I said, need that. I can't <laughs> wait to caption that. <laughs> no, he went crazy, bro. Oof. So, yeah. Can't wait. Yeah, it's, it's a great record, though. It's yeah, a great yeah, record. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but, yeah, I, I, I really like Sideways. Um, healing. Put some time to grow on me. Um, it's just like, it's, there's always those like couple lines on Drake records that really hit home. So on Sideways, he goes, um, "If I dropped her name right now, she'd be too hype. I bet you want to come to Miami. I bet you want to come to where I am. Or you were never my girl. It was just my turn. Like shit like that for for like a for, for the certified lover boy within. <laughs> it hits. It hits. And the healing. This nigga sound tired. He's like, I don't want to go out. I want to be inside recovering. All this shit. Like, bro, I get it. Like, oh. like this 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 outside life, this party life, it's too mm. much. Sometimes you want to be in watching Love Island, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Cuddled up with your with your cats because, you know, you ain't got nobody right now. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, <laughs> if, if y'all feel me out there, let me know. <laughs> but um, I, I, I thought they were good records. I, I, I still, I like a bunch of the ones on Honestly Nevermind more than these ones. But, exactly. But I, I thought they were fun. I thought it, it was cool to get I Drake in, in the house music vibe. It was cool to like sit and listen to a house album. This one we got Kate Renata a couple months ago, so you know it's just cool to get that feel. And you know, I, I hope people. Gordo um, harped on this a lot in our interview. He was like, "I hope these music niggas are open minded. You know, if you're a woman, you'll like some of this. If you like Latin, Latin pop, you know, urban type music, you'll like it. If you like hip hop culture, like honestly, the Drake songs weren't even the best ones to me. The T Pain one, I love t- the T Pain one. Uh, Larry June just like." Talking over the records was cool to me. The Leon Bridges one, Candid, Candid Zone was good. That one was good. Um, fucking, uh, what do you mean with Carolina Falk? I love that one. Like, it's some some really good shit on here. So yeah, the, similar to the Camila Cabello album, the Drake songs weren't even the best ones to me. But yeah, yeah, never Fun playing records. again. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> uh, but yeah, shout out to Gordo. He 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 was he was super hyped to drop this. This was his first album under his new name because he changed to Gordo in like 2021, 22. So um, yeah, shout out to him. Um, let's jump into this lunch break real quick. We talked Olympics a little earlier. Um, I tapped into the Team USA basketball game against Serbia. We beat the fuck out of Jokic and all them. America, nigga. We here. <laughs> America. Um, 110 to 84. Kevin Durant, first game back off injury, went nearly perfect from the field, had a true shooting percentage. Of 116%. That man right there. Well, What's like, that mean? So, true shooting percentage takes into account, uh, aside from, like, field goals and three-pointers, it also takes uh, free throws into account. Mm. And so, his, like, the highest your shooting percentage goes is 100%. Right. His was 116%, his right. true shooting percentage. That's crazy. Because yeah. he only missed one shot in the game. Wow. Like, it was, it was, it was a master class. So, it was really great to see KD do his thing. LeBron James, damn near 50 years old, still cooking these niggas out here. Still the best in the world. I, I, I don't care what nobody says. Y'all been trying to put Jokic. I've been trying to put, and I love Luka. Luka, um, Tatum, Autumn. LeBron James is still the best player in the world. And we could debate this physically. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm, I'm not playing. Like, like I'm, 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 I'm looking right at you. You who doesn't agree with me, 
LeBron James is still the best player in the world. We could debate this physically. Um, but there was some controversy. Jason Tatum got zero minutes um, in that game, up. and everyone was making a huge deal about it online. Uh, well, how how'd you feel seeing Tatum get no minutes? I think it's uh, I think it's corny as fuck. Um, you, yeah, you think him getting no minutes or the reaction to it? Him getting no minutes is okay. corny as fuck. Um, Steve Kerr is tripping. I mean, that's why he came out the next day and said, uh, "I was I was tweaking. I, mm-hmm. Jason's definitely gonna play the next game." I think, yeah, bro. It's just. It's some weird shit going on with USA basketball mm-hmm. on the men and women's side. Yeah. Um, I just think it's it's very political that people just like don't even realize and yeah. it'd be a lot of shit that like happens behind the scenes. And I get it. It's like I think it took me for this I think it took me this year to understand how serious people take USA basketball and like 'cause it's one it's one team representing the country, so it's like the the, not, it's not even the 12 best players. It's just 12 players they select. Yeah. So, like, yeah, anybody's going to be pissed if you don't get picked for the team. And then when you pick people for the team and then don't play them, yeah. and they're like, they're one of the best players, they just won a championship, they won a goal for you back in two and 20, I think it was, I don't know what, what some FIBA, I think it was 2018 or 2020 or something, Yeah. that they played in FIBA and he was the second leading scorer. Yeah, 2021. So why are you yeah. playing? Ex- <laughs> And that's the issue. Facts. Oh. So my so weird. my perspective weird. on it is, it was one game, so I feel like people were overreacting a little bit. Like it's, it's the, it was their first game, but KD came back and caught the hot hand, bro. Like he, he did not miss a shot in, in that first half, and so you don't want to fuck with a nigga who's in rhythm like that. So I th- that that's kind of how I looked at it. And Kerr had his rotations, like, and also this year, like when when Tatum was a second leading scorer, it was like him and. Book and a bunch of other guys. This year, all these older players are playing now. So you've got Braun, you got Curry, you got KD, and Bede's first year playing with Team USA, I believe. So I, I feel like if you were to like make a hierarchy of all the guys, like Tatum kind of falls a little lower. And granted, yes, he just played on on a team who won the finals. He was your second leading scorer in 2021, three time All NBA. Like he's he's phenomenal, and he absolutely should play. I feel like this one game. It, like zero minutes is crazy. I, I I completely agree. Zero minutes is crazy, but I feel like it's a little too soon to be doing these like crazy referendums on the rotations and and Steve Kerr's coaching ability because Tatum could get fifteen minutes the very next game and score twenty points and it's like like people whine for nothing. Like like Kerr admitted he was wrong, and and, and it's crazy, but it's like I I don't know. I I didn't think it was that huge of a deal. I. I actually, you know, and this might not be an exclusive or whatever, but I did, I did get kind of wind that the players might have sat down with Kerr and said, and like had a conversation, yeah, like why are you not playing him? Mm. Because the players are, I just heard the players are not happy. Like I just heard the players are confused. Why are you not playing? Why, yeah, why I was confused. Why are you not playing Jason? <laughs> and, and and you know you bring in Derek White, he's a replacement, and you know you playing, you playing, you're playing the the, the bros teammates. More than him, and you know what? It's just one game. I just, you know, I, uh, it, I think the way Kerr responded and just the way to see the response, I feel like something. I feel like somebody had a, had a talking to. Just, I, I feel like something happened, bro. For where, sure. Where where somebody probably came down, and be like, yo, yeah, that can't happen again. Yeah. So, I mean, for me, and at the end of the day, too, it's like the, they won. Like mm-hmm. if 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 they would have lost, then I'd have been like, all right, bro, like put right. put Tatum in because Embiid was playing terribly. Like Embiid should not be on that. Like all, all due respect to yeah. to Joel, but that nigga was playing terrible. If there's anyone who should, should got zero minutes, Joel Embiid. But you know the U.S. ended up winning by twenty six. So I'm like, yeah, I, I can't be too upset. Like KD came in, cooked. LeBron did his thing. Like uh, Anthony Edwards out there doing his like. Yeah, we, we we look great. I'm. It's cool. It's cool. It's gonna be fun. And also like niggas are old. Like LeBron. LeBron got a lot of minutes. Like I don't, I don't think LeBron's gonna be able to play like that throughout the entirety of this. I don't think. Uh, KD and Steph are gonna be able to do it, so you're gonna need people to 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 step up, and so that's strategic. Yeah, yeah, like that's that's they'll be fine. How I look it's gonna it. be fine. Yeah, it's just like, people just love drama. Yeah, yeah. I I saw a great tweet about just how how people talk about basketball now, and it comes from a place of hate, and everything is is hot takes and provoking, and rather rather than just like real analysis. And people started bringing up the oh, Jason Tatum um is is good at like 
being on great teams that he doesn't have to provide for. And I'm like, yo, are y'all still trying to say he didn't do anything in the finals? Like, yeah, please don't piss me off. Yeah, I'm not doing another. That's one thing. I haven't done facts. a two minute drill in since the first time I did it. Get him. I'm gonna spare y'all. I'm gonna spare y'all this time because y'all know how I feel. You sound stupid. You sound very fucking stupid. But um, hey, man, at the end of the day, America's winning. So salute. Flag, you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't, I don't know what the American thing is, but but we out here doing our thing, man. That's cool to see. The American thing is this. <laughs> you're right. You're right. <laughs> we shooting them down, boy. White America, oh Black God. America. <laughs> oh my God. Unfortunately, um, and in some MLB news, man, my 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 pinstripe pride has never been has never been more more prideful. The Yankees <laughs> defeated the Boston Red Sox two one in our in our highly intense rivalry series with major American League East implications. And we also added the Bahamian Jazz Chisholm to the roster. Outfielder, infielder, another bat that we needed. Giancarlo Stanton's coming back. Jason Dominguez is going to be back soon. Yankees up. Kieran, a Mets fan. Fuck you. <laughs> fuck fuck all you crazy. Mets fans out there. He's a Red Mets Sox fan? fans. Red sucks. Fuck y'all too. Yankees up, baby. I'm I'm delusionally confident until they disappoint me again. But right now we up, we up. It, it felt so good to watch that extra innings victory. It felt so good to watch us cook the Red Sox on a Sunday night. Sunday night baseball. I'm in the crib in, 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 in my blankie, chilling, <laughs> sipping on water, eating a cauliflower pizza, watching the Yankees put boot to ass. <laughs> we are up, and there's nothing you could do about it. Well, well, I, I, you're also a Yankee fan. I'm a yes. big, I'm a big, I'm a big Yankee fan, bro. I'm a big Yankee fan. I fuck with the Yankees a lot. I love them. Um, I'm excited. I'm excited about Jazz. Um, we definitely need a. I feel like you're gonna they're gonna make another move. Yeah, the, 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 we, talking about pitchers, possibly another infielder. Yeah, we need we need we need a little bit more help just because, bro. It's insane. I feel like this has happened like the past three years. The Yankees have started amazing, and yeah. then we just hit like. It's always July, in June, uh, June and July, June, June and July, uh, and it just be, turns into like we're like the worst team in baseball, yeah. and like people are like, "What in the hell is going on?" Like yeah. I'm about to blow up the Yankees. So it's good they're making some moves. Um, yeah, we just need some help around. The, we just need help around Soto and just like and like you said, those pe- those players are coming back. Stan, mm-hmm. we're gonna get Dominguez. It's gonna yeah. be nice to see Dominguez actually come back and play like um, major league um, major league games. Um, but it's crazy, bro. As much as, as as bad as they've been, I'm really not that worried about the Yankees. I feel like they're gonna get it together. But I, maybe we're still I should only be. two games out of first. Yeah. <laughs> Despite the, yeah, like we're, we're eleven and twenty three exactly. since like exactly whatever exactly. So it's like I do feel eh, eh. But my main goal for the Yankees this season is make sure you fucking resign Soto. Absolutely, that has to Absolutely. happen. Yeah, and then. You know, if we win a championship and do all that other stuff, that would be amazing too. Because mm-hmm. the par- a Yankee parade. Oh man, nigga, I'm I'm I'm. Shit, I'm, I'm gonna wilding. watch it and I'm going. Bro, I'm it will be the most lit shit niggas will ever ever see in this city. I'm out there wild in the Bronx. Yeah. I'm, I'm yeah. I, I I tongue down. It's gonna like be five it's Mexicans, gonna be bro. nuts. Yo. <laughs> nuts. Bro, I'm outside, nuts. bro. Nuts. I'm out. Shirt off. All this type of like all this type of shit. Like, Ripping my, my Fenty uh, boxers off. Yeah. <laughs> Feel me? Yo, Facts. We, 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 I'm sorry, I I got Facts. a little inappropriate, but because, that's how bad I want this World Series, man. Like we need it. It's so, been too long. I think you know. I think I think that they, they have a chance this year, man. They, and they, they just get it together in August, and maybe get it together in September a little bit, and just let's just go into it. Yeah, let's go into it ready to go because you can, these next like these next two years, these next three years, especially they resign Soto. It's our championship window, fellas. Mm-hmm. And if we don't get it done, then might never see one. So, yeah. When's the well, last time you've been in a, my a baseball game, Miss Two Bs? Um, when I was a little girl. Damn. Yeah, when I was like, I don't even remember how old I was before the age of fourteen. For mm-hmm. sure, my uncle used to come from Panama and take us to Yankee games. That's what's up. So, that's it was what's a vibe. Up. That's nice, that's if they make the play, if they, no, they're gonna make the playoffs. But we're gonna pick a day. We're gonna go to a playoff game, all three of us. Them, them I love the food. Rollick, let's do so it though. Let's do it. Let's do it. I'm it with it. I'm spurging. No, I'm gonna say we press. So we should be able to. <laughs> we gonna figure it out. Yeah. We, we will find a way to. We get gonna it. figure for it sure. out for sure. For sure. But yes, that is our lunch break. And now, last week, as you all saw, we let y'all get to know uh, brother Will a little more. Um, his great journey. And now it is time to get to know 
the incomparable Miss Two Bs. Now, if you've been listening since season three, you've heard us you've heard us interview her um, during our bad and busy month. But for those who are new, new to the vibes, then you know you'll get to get to know her. So, yeah, I'm I'm very excited to do this. So let's start. Let's start with it. Uh, Brooklyn, born and raised. Yes. Yes. Flatbush. I am big Flatbush. Big you know, Flatbush. my family's from Panama mm-hmm. and my dad's from Colombia. I have to put that out there too because I'll be acting like my daddy don't exist. <laughs> but <laughs> my dad is Colombian and my mom's Panamanian. I was born here. Mm. Okay. What's what? What's what's like your earliest like memory? Like like my earliest like I hit my head on my mom's like fucking thing on her bed. Like that's one of my earliest memories. I guess the pain makes it stick in my head. Like what's your earliest? Just anything to it, like randomly. Any early memory you have? Um, I remember it used to be hard to do my hair because mm-hmm. I had like a lot of hair, big hair, and um, all the natural hair methods that we have now. The moms and used to have in the early two thousands and the nineties, <laughs> like they was really combing and shit like mm-hmm. this. Mm-hmm. They wasn't doing it like from the end to the root, like how we do it now. They was really making your shit tender as mm-hmm. fuck, and I remember. Like, them just literally just fighting me to wash my hair and detangle my hair. And I was screaming to the top of my lungs, calling for my uncle. <laughs> like, help me! <laughs> and he deadass was trying to help me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> he was deadass trying to help me. And, um, yeah, my hair eventually got done, but I had to get a perm when I was seven. Mm-hmm. I was one of those, because my mm-hmm. mom was not going to go through that shit every week. So, oh. no. Okay, let me ask you a question to piggyback off what Armand said. What was your earliest memory of music and entertainment or just being maybe falling in love with it? Um, one of my early musical memories is um, I had a cousin that used to live with my mom. You know, if you're Caribbean or from New York, you definitely had an era where a family member stayed with you <laughs> periodically. So, um, but I loved when my cousin was living with us because I'm an only child. Mm. And uh, she was watching Axis Granite, and it was Missy Elliott's, was it Lose Control? No, 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 not Lose Control. That was a good part. <laughs> right? It was um, Work It. Mm, okay. Yeah, it was Work It. That's fire. And um, my mom was like, all right, Ebony, time to go to bed. And my cousin was like, oh, can she finish it? And then um, we finished That's watching fire. the whole episode. And she's like, don't worry, I'll make sure she go to bed. And I watched it, and I was just like, yo, this shit is fire. Like That's amazing. Yeah, and I That's love Miss Elliot. That's a fire first memory, facts, actually. Yeah. Did you play any instruments growing, growing up? Um, I was in chorus. Okay. I was in chorus growing up. Um, but that's about it. And I danced. Mm. So, like, I did ballet, tap, jazz, you know, the typical <laughs> hood black girl. <laughs> ain't trying to be hood, you know, pathway. <laughs> I did all them things. <laughs> How, how do you think your family members would have described young Miss Two Bs? Oh, exactly how I am now. <laughs> I've always stood on business. Like, when I said I'm not doing that shit, mm-hmm. I ain't doing it. Mm-hmm. For real. Like, I always stood on business. It was the craziest <laughs> thing to hear them describe me as a baby standing on it, like running the whole house. It's insane. And I wasn't like a crier either. But like... I would make an uproar if it's something that was happening that I didn't like. Mm -hmm. Like, don't change the TV when Barney's on. Facts. I was definitely going to cause a ruckus up in there. Like, even my uncle, and I I was raised in a traditional Latin home. My uncle paid all the bills. Like, whatever he said kind of goes, but he couldn't even change the TV Mm, if Barney was on. So, yeah, I was standing on that shit. Mm. Do you remember? Go ahead. Oh, I was... I just want to ask you, I mean, what was it like growing up in New York? I know that's like a, a, a big, broad question, but like, I guess what was it like growing up in New York as Miss Two Bs? Yeah, as me. Um, Because it's, yeah. You know, after I watched Biggie's I Got a Story to Tell Doc, mm. it kind of highlighted how different um, being a first generation American is versus like having American parents or even my siblings like my dad has two other kids and their mom is American and my Mm. dad was locked up when I was like seven and got deported Mm -hmm. so they have more of an American upbringing and like our lifestyles are just like night and day 
So my mom is one of those Caribbean people that just, you know, try to keep me sheltered. And mm-hmm. she was super strict. And, mm-hmm. you know, she made sure that I was occupied at all times. Ballet, tap, jazz. Smart. Like, I even did a Panamanian Smart. folkloric dance called Tipico. Like, wow. what? Yeah. <laughs> Summer day camp. Uh, my mom's a teacher, too. Oh, okay, fine. So, you know, they teach you all about gang stuff and all that when you're training to be a teacher. So my mom was like, she hell no. That shit. Yeah, she was not playing none of that shit. Home. <laughs> yeah. Like, I couldn't even be out while she mm. wasn't out, while she wasn't home. I'm real strict. So I just stayed on my computer a lot, downloading mm. music on LimeWire, giving my computer AIDS like everybody else. <laughs> you know what I mean? But um, no, I'd had fine. a lot of fun, though, because my mom had, like, her click. They all had one child, mm. and all their baby daddies got deported. Damn. So wow. <laughs> they all became my primos, mm. even though we were all only children. So we all used to go to Dorney Park every summer, barbecue like every other week, celebrate everyone's birthday. We even used to match, mm. and we're not even like blood related. So no, growing funny. up was definitely fun. And then um, my friend from high school highlighted the difference between growing up in a building versus growing up in a house. Mm-hmm. Um, she said that she didn't always talk to her neighbors versus me. I know like at least 15 people that live on my block because I'm talking to people and my mom cooks a lot. So she's cooking for the building. They call her Panama. (laughs) So I'm Panama's daughter. And, you know, it was a lot of kids, a lot of just community growing up. That's fire. It was a little bit of sprinkle of the crack era still in the early 2000s a little bit. Mm -hmm. So it was wild. Um, like... I remember going outside when I first started going outside with my mom. My mom taught me what to do in the event I was caught up in a shootout. Mm -hmm. So, like, you know, things like that. She's like, identify the exit as soon as you go in. You hear shots, get low. And I'm just like, um, okay. You know, um, she also instructed me not to let nobody ride my bike. And my dumb ass made somebody ride my bike once. Mm -hmm. But she felt bad and came back when my homegirl bike got stolen. But Yeah, it was like, you know, regular kid shit. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. What do you remember what you the first thing you wanted to be like when you grew up, like the very first dream? A singer. Singer? Yeah, I wanted okay. to be a singer. But um I was just too shy for that. Mm. Honestly. You shy? I am shy. <laughs> no one believes That is the absolute last word yeah, I would ever it, use to describe you. What? I, I, Karen. I, I, Josh. No, it's, it's it's not giving. You don't give. Shy. I've, 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 I feel like I could bring you anywhere and you'd make friends. Mm-hmm. Like, I mean, within minutes. Like I don't know how to describe it, but there are like I can be shy, mm-hmm. but I can make friends in minutes. So mm-hmm. it's just so weird. But singing in person is is scary though. That's, you that's, really? that's like that's next level. That's like, different. That's like, next right. level like confidence you gotta have. Hell yeah, and like, I ain't have it. That's so just tough, I'm just like uh uh-uh, uh, I don't got that level of confidence. Mm-hmm. And then um. You know, having an immigrant mother, Mm -hmm. she wasn't trying to hear that shit. So I told her that one time. She's like, you don't want to be something more realistic like a doctor? Broke my little heart. And I'm just like, you know. Like, bitch, you ain't. Niggas can't have dreams? Nope. Nope. Not when they immigrated here. You cannot. You need to have guaranteed stability so they could brag on it. But, um, yeah, no, I wanted to be a singer at first. Like, Aaliyah. I was so in awe with how she had, like, all male dancers all the time. Mm. She was so pretty and slim and just angelic to me. So I'm like, oh, I'm going to do that. Mm. But then now I'm a reporter and mm. a social media manager. And when did, like, do you remember, like, the very first moment where you kind of identified, like, working in music, being, like, a journalist, content creator, entertainment space? Like, I, I fuck with this. This is something that I could see myself doing. Well, it was different when I started. Mm. I was 19 when I started. So, like, two dope boys still existed. Like, we were still going on websites to get, like, our new music ratings and stuff like that. So, content creator wasn't something that I had, you know, in my mind. But I did take a College Now course, and they brought us to the Maury show. Mm, and I was just lit. like, yo. <laughs> <Be lit. laughs> That's crazy. I was like, yo, I'm about to do this shit forever. Maury is right here. And I used Literally. to skip school a lot. I went to Edward R. Murrow High School. I don't know if you y'all know about. Yeah, I went to Murrow. 
What is that? I mean, you got to tell me. I don't know. Morrow High School is like, um, we had electives mm. and free periods. Okay. So, so yeah. they basically treated you like you were in college, but you were in high school. Mm-hmm. So like, if you didn't have that self-control, because nobody's checking you. Right. They're just calling home and saying, oh, your child missed class. And, you know, you could get out of that mm-hmm. easily. But, yeah, like, I skipped school a lot, especially in junior high school, too, because my mom's a teacher, so she has the same schedule as me. Oh, you was. Yeah, and then, like, I lived across the street with my aunt who left the house, like, at 6 a.m. So, like, if we waked and baked and I didn't feel like fucking going, I wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> That's fire. Yeah. <laughs> That means shit. That's yeah. what she she just described ass. it. Fire as fuck. Dead ass. I'm like, all right. But then my mom did catch me a few times. Damn. So I had to go to school. So what, what, what was the very first place you wrote up? Was it the source where you got your... your yeah. Yeah? Yep. I started off at the source. I saw they posted a casting call. Mm. Walked in, seen Carrie. Mm-hmm. Shout out to my boy Carrie. Seen him. Um, I had a friend who was already working there, so she put in a word for me, but... Carrie was impressed with my resume and the way I sold myself. So it, I started off there and the rest was history. You know what? You're right. I'm not shy in certain environments <laughs> because the way I walked in there, all, oh, yeah. I, I, I think stage fright m- might be a better yeah. way to describe it for singing in front of people. Which, right, right. Which completely right. makes sense. Stage fright is different. Yeah. Right. Shy, I, I would never use for you. Stage fright, you, you, you can have it. Yeah, it's, yeah. More, it's more of a thing that I like people to discover. Like, you know, I'm washing dishes and they be like, oh, girl, you're yeah, saying, oh, you call a little note. I'm like, yeah, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, and obviously, we, we've, we've alluded to it, but the source is, uh, it, it's an experience. <laughs> so. it's, it's my stomping grounds I'm not even gonna lie to you mm. cause we gonna lead with love yeah of course <laughs> I learned a lot about leverage mm-hmm. like I don't take a lot of shit now because of my experience at the source yeah. and Londell is harder on the boys than he is the girls mm. I would admit like mm. don't get me wrong he's still tough yeah but he won't go as hard on us as he would on the boys so it kind of just gave me the exposure to, like, just how tough and sometimes cutthroat the industry can really be. Mm-hmm. But I was still able to learn a lot of things. I learned about a lot about hard work, too. Mm-hmm. Like, I ain't never broke day to make a magazine, make sure a magazine is in on time and, like, you know, turn around stories, 10 stories a day. Like, I was busting my fucking ass at the source, yeah. like. It really laid out the foundation and the groundwork for what you see today. Because I can't front. It's a lot of turmoil and all mm-hmm. the drama and shit. Yeah. But, yeah, it taught me a lot. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I think it's very trendy now for a lot of people to shit talk. But, like, I, I, I would not. Ne- I'm very thankful for the. Because I only interned there. I was there for three months. So you, you you were there a lot longer than me. But, yeah, I was there for years. But within That's those one, three months, I saw a lot. Woo. I learned a lot. I did a lot. I was there woo. for years. So I'm, I'm very thankful for it because, like, there's people to this day who tell me, yo, like, I got your email from when you were writing at the source. I was like, damn, like, in those three months, I wrote enough to where publicists were, you know, trying to contact me to give me the cover shit. So I'm, I'm very thankful for it, the visibility it gave me. Like, I could never take that away. And I built my network mm-hmm. off of that, too, like mm-hmm. you said. Mm-hmm. You know, Londell would think that I was doing certain things for publicists Mm -hmm. or whatever for money and things like that. But, you know, there were those moments that I just fucked with the song. Like, my homegirl Beanish sent me Kent Jones' song that telling me this, Mm -hmm. telling me that. And I liked it when I heard it the first time. So I was like, all right, I'll cover it for you. Mm -hmm. And that built a relationship between her and I. And then she went on to represent P&B Rock and then Mm. Bobby and Rowdy. And that's how I was Mm. able to secure those Mm. exclusives. Mm. So... Yeah, shout out to the source. No, no, I was, I mean, the, yeah. <laughs> Relationships are so important in this game and, like, just listen to her stories about, you know, how she just talked about how she reached out to, and then she was starting managing P&G Rock and this and that. Like, bro, those relationships and, and laying that groundwork early yes. is so important. Yeah. And so, like, People be like looking at me like, yo, I fuck with her. She works mm-hmm. hard. Mm-hmm. She covers some shit for me yep. that... She liked just off the rip, and it wasn't. It was genuine. It wasn't. It wasn't her. Like, okay, I'm about to scratch your back so you can scratch my back. Exactly. Yeah. And that I literally shit just is, liked it. Yeah. Yeah. That shit will turn. That she shit will ruin ruin time. relationships and ruin everything. That's why you just gotta do it. Genuinely. And you know, publicists live off retainers. So yeah. I didn't even know 
what that one link was doing for her and why she was mm-hmm. just so thankful. I'm like, girl, it's mm-hmm. okay, girl. I, I love music. <laughs> just send me some mm-hmm. more. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then the rest is history. Exactly. Yeah. That's just fire. And fire. so you said you spent a lot of years at the source, but you've all, you also had pl- placements elsewhere. What was that grind like, that, that kind of freelance pitching networking securing placements elsewhere type of grind and like oh. were, were you figuring that out on your own or did you kind of have someone to kind of guide you with that yeah i was figuring that out on my own to be honest um i interned i stopped so i was at the source maybe for like five years i think i'm embarrassed to even say that shit out loud because <laughs> i only stopped really because the pandemic yeah um, so from like 19, like think of like a toxic relationship and you see a girl finally get out and you're just like, damn girl, I thought you was never going to leave that shit. Like that's how it felt. So like, you know, I was figuring things out, but in the midst of that, I did intern at Power 105 briefly mm-hmm. for oh, Angie fire. Martinez and built a that's lot crazy. of relationships. Yeah, that's how I know Gabe. That's Thanks. how I know We're Nyla. What? And I interned there the year... Like, they were getting hit with a lawsuit mm. that year that I interned. So, like, the following year, interns started getting paid. I was tight. Mm. But, um, like, the relationships that I built there is still everlasting. Like, my homegirl, Chantel. Mm. Like, I remember um, when I started at United Masters, I literally had a Grammy event two weeks after my onboarding. And they were just a bit wary because they had a social team before me and the social team just was not delivering the way they expected to. So um, I was advised to just, you know, focus on content creation and not networking. Mm-hmm. And I'm just like, bitch, like, <laughs> I don't need a network. And you don't even know I don't like nobody. So anyway, I'm at the red carpet, you know, doing my thing. And then I see my homegirl, Chantel. And then she's introducing me to Rhapsody because she manages Rhapsody now. And I know her because when I was an intern, she was, like, an assistant for Angie's manager. Like, so we basically on was on the come up together. Yeah. And it's just, like, even Gabe, too, he used to give me a lot of tips over the pandemic on how to grow my brand. I fell off because I just didn't have the team to just be consistent. But, you know, seeing everything and, like, imagine if I get hit with a PR client. I'd be like, yo, Gabe. Yo, I need that person to do a freestyle real quick. I did that shit at the BET Awards, actually. I helped out a publicist friend, and she needed me to escort Santana. And I walked right in there like, yerp, y'all, hold me down. (laughs) So, it's cool. Absolutely, absolutely. And uh, you kind of mentioned your platform before, but 2Bs TV. What was the inspiration behind creating that? What what, what were those stages of having Hmm. your own thing? Because I think a lot of us, you know, it's, it's so... It's so dope. Like, yo, I'm creating my own shit. Like, this is mine. I'm going to take this far as fuck. And then you, you realize it's not going to go far as fuck immediately. <laughs> so so those early stages can be rough. You learn a lot. Like, so well, what were they like for you? First, I was motivated to launch 2BCV because Londell was just always dubbing me, mm-hmm. dubbing mm. my ideas. Mm. Nipsey Hustle came through to give us an exclusive on his um, $100 mixtape. And his um crypto that he had, he said no. Um, I pitched Fetty Wap for the cover. Um, he said no. Um, there were a lot of things that were just happening that made sense that he would say no to for mm-hmm. no reason. Mm-hmm. And I didn't want to like hinder my relationship with the publicist who was making the request. So I was just like, yo, fuck it. I'm about to be on my Elliot Wilson shit. Mm -hmm. I literally will always say that shit in the office because, you know, he left the source and started XXL. So I'd be like, yo, I'm about to be on my Elliot Wilson shit. Like, and he would just... You would say that out, you would say that, like, out loud? Yeah, I mean, me and Londell, like I told you, it was, it's like one of my longest toxic relationships Mm -hmm, that being mm -hmm, at that mm -hmm, job. mm -hmm. Like, that's like my work dad. Him yeah. and my mom got the same birthday too, and when I found that That's out, nice. oh, you I was, was like, like, you was like, I know right. how to handle you. <laughs> like, it's like, oh yeah, y'all know how I've to seen, handle. I've you. seen this beast before. <laughs> Real talk, <laughs> like, I so <laughs> he, and then I came into his office when I was 19 years old. Yeah, nice. I'm 29 right now, That's so nice. in many ways, he watched me grow up. Like, you know, he he is my work dad in many ways. So I will go back and forth with him. Like, no, we need to do this or. You know, just certain things, like certain buttons that you wouldn't push or certain people wouldn't push, I would feel more comfortable to push just because of our relationship. But 
yeah, I would be up in there going off yeah, about I mean, certain things. Um, when Hove dropped four four four, I remember. Oh my God, yo, TMZ was blowing the office phone up. What happened? <laughs> So, Rondo McMillan, you must be colorblind. Yeah, J- you see Jay-Z green dissed. through those purple eyes. And for Hove to name your full government name, yeah. that's... A- Wait, I never knew. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, he's- now, I, I, was at, I was at Made in America singing that part, man, hard. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. He, he now I our boss while now, we were working there. What did niggas... What was it like in the office? Bro. When that, that, baby. He, he, he kept making me play the song over and over and how, over and over. Did he, not hear, about, did he not hear his name or he wanted to hear Oh, no, no. He, he heard he it. Wanted to keep he did hearing. an interview with Complex yeah, about it. Like, he he just had such a big ego oh, that, like, he was pissed about it, but he also wanted, wanted to, like... Yeah, he just wanted name. to hear it more. He was like, yeah, hey, the song is whatever. It's, it's a nice beat, though. I'm like, nigga, you know you mad. <laughs> and he called a meeting and was like, Ebony's jocking Jay-Z. <laughs> Because I kept writing about him or whatever. And I'm like, I don't care, God forbid, if he drops dead today, I ain't writing it. Like, I was cutting up. Like, I was just frustrated with yeah. the creative differences and just no, not being funny. able to that's do crazy. things. That's crazy. That's crazy. That's crazy. That's you crazy. feel me? And I was just like, yo, I'm going to launch my shit. And then I'm going to just at least get the quote and put it on the source so that the publicist can still have that source link. But yeah. I'm going to start growing the 2BCVU2 page. And I'm going to... Yeah. Do my thing, and the publicists who rock with the movement, they'll be like, "All right, get it for two beats and the source." So, yeah. And that's that's you know it's a beautiful story, like because there's a lot of people who would be in your position or positions I've been in where they would just kind of just stay, like they wouldn't use that resentment or frustration to birth something that takes their career further. And we've seen like yeah. with two beats to TV, you've done incredible things, like Tell viral me. clips, exclusives, like. You were able to employ people. Like, well, what was it like to know that you created this thing and then you were also able to put money in people's pockets? You're super resilient. I would say that's, Thank you. Super resi- that's super that resilient. New York shit. Yeah, that's that Caribbean shit. Resilient. <laughs> but um, it felt dope. It's it's a lot of responsibilities, though. Yeah. I would tell you that. And I'm an Aquarius. They like to say that we're emotionless, but it's just that I don't really like to display it if I feel like you're not worth it. Absolutely. So we have a lot of emotions. And when I'm in that mental state, I can't really be as productive as I can be. I'm sure as that's the case for most people. But, like, I just need to scale back. But in in real time, it felt good. Um, you know, going out to events and, like, having my interns be like, yeah, this is my boss. Like, girl, I'm just a girl. <laughs> like, you know, introducing me, um, asking me for letters of recommendation. Yeah. Um, but I always gave big sis vibes, like, ever since I was young. Mm-hmm. Um, even, like, the dudes who I grew up with who are the same age as me, they didn't know that we were the same age because I would hang out with, like, the older kids and just the way I move, so. Yeah. Um, and I know you've also done some other roles, like, and granted, I think you kind of built that skill set just naturally, but you've done, like, social at places, and I don't even know what you're doing at United Masters now. Like, you just... <laughs> I'm the so. social media manager there. Oh, nice. <laughs> there we go. And you want to know the irony? It <laughs> got to thank Londell at the source. He used to force me to do sources, socials, yeah. and I used to hate it. Yeah. And he will be like, yo, Ev, you good with the captions. Come on. Mm -hmm. You know how to make it go viral. You know how to make it engaging. And I used to hate it. And I used to hate when he would force me to do entertainment reporting, Mm -hmm. which is so ironic because I want to do junkets now. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, he knew I love TV, but it's like, I don't want to write about that shit. I want to write about music. I felt I was just being rebellious because there was just a larger staff and there were a lot more males on the team and I wanted to talk about music yeah. and Londell was not trying to make me talk about music. Yeah. That was, that was a frustrating part. It's like, I, I would, I too would pitch a bunch of stuff that I thought would be cool to cover and I would have to write the dumb, dumbest news stories. Yeah. Like, oh. <laughs> yeah. So I feel you. Um, at, at this stage, you've been in journalism for a while and you've done a lot. Like, I remember, uh, you, you know Regina, Regina Chung. Of yeah. course. So she, she and I talk all the time just about how when we were younger, like, we felt like we had to be everywhere, go to every event, meet people, blah, blah, blah. And Regina feels like, I don't, I don't have that need. Like, if it's, like, something big, something significant, like, I'll go. But as far as out all the time, going to every single thing, you just kind of get tired of it. Like, a lot of, the, a lot of them kind of feel, like, the same. And, I, and I'm, like, kind of there, too. Like, for you. Because you, you, you be outside. You 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 be doing stuff, but I, I do. But we also know that you love being inside. 
<laughs> and, and spending time by yourself, mm-hmm. cooking, you know, yep. watching TV, chilling, watching TV, smoking. smoking. There we go. Yep. So in like, that order. So where, where, <laughs> where, where are you at? Because it's it's like the higher you get, the more access you get to stuff. Yeah. But then you also you get more access, like more widespread. So I was like, you can yeah. be at more things, and it's tough to like say no. But then it's also like you got to prioritize yourself. So like, how do you, how do you balance all that? Yeah, um, it's so tough because now we're in this influencer era. Mm. So now I find myself trying to come outside more mm-hmm. so that I can create content yeah. about it or around it. Um, and also, there's a thing, like, if you don't post it, it didn't happen. Mm-hmm. So, you know, just trying so to make crazy. sure that I'm still visible um, because... You know, people would say that they don't know what I do or would act like they forgot what I do. And I'll be like, hey, why you didn't send me that, um, you know, that press release or that listening party? Or they'd be like, oh, I didn't know. And I'm just like, "Come on." okay, so everything that I've done for the past decade literally means nothing because I'm not posting consistently. I'm not outside. I'm not doing certain things. So... I'm I'm in this weird place right now, especially because I just closed on a home. Yeah. So now I'm just like, all right, do I just continue building my real estate portfolio and then just, you know, get my money up and then just do the things that I want to do? Mm-hmm. Or do I really go hard and, like, you know, corner that market that I know I can? Like, you know, a lot of the things that the brands are looking for, you know, naturally, like, I know 10 charismatic people. Like, I know, like, 10 Kai Sanats, bro. I'm, like, related to one. Like, it's so many people that are charismatic in my everyday life yeah. that they be trying to encourage me. They're like, Ebony, just record. And I'm like, no. I don't want no one to know I'm crazy. So, you know, it's like, it's <laughs> it's a slippery slope. I don't know. I don't yeah. know. Yeah, it's been a, it's been a tough trend. Like, it, I'm... So seeing the way journalism has shifted is very interesting. Like yeah. I remember, you know, when I first really broke through, it was writing and video content was becoming more of a thing. And then video content really took over. And now it's these streamers. And now it's, you know, TikToks and Reels and all that. And writing isn't as appreciated. Um, like, I started the podcast because I felt like I wasn't getting the writing opportunities that I wanted. But people will press play on something and listen to it on their commute or listen to the gym or something. Mm-hmm. And so it's been an interesting transition. Like, it took me a while to figure out how to make a TikTok. And mine are very basic, very simple, not good. I'm going to help you. Please do. Please do. Because I, I feel like I have a lot of stuff that I could make into cool content. And we don't have to make it corny. Like, mm-hmm. you can still highlight yourself. Like, yeah. you, don't worry. I'm going to help you. Thank you. Thank you. Sh- shout out to that. But <laughs> that, that transition, because, you know, you said earlier when you first got started, content creation wasn't a thing. But now you are a content creator making reels, you know. Like, I, I saw your tweet last night, like, planning out your content calendar. Like, it's crazy that, that we're at that place, but that's kind of what it and is. And mind you, that was just for UM. Right. That wasn't even for Miss <laughs> 2Bs or 2BCB. Mm. And God. then I have my social agency, too, where I pick up clients as well. So mm-hmm. I'm not going to lie. I do think that that will be the final step of my career. And it will kind of, like, bring everything together being able to employ all the videographers and creators that have helped me yeah, throughout my journey and still being able amazing. to tell stories through social media production and marketing and yeah. still having the opportunities, you know, like I would love for my agency Polished, shameless plug, I would love for Polished to be the brand it's that like name. Coca-Cola contracts for Essence Fest to, you mm-hmm. know, handle content capture or, like, you know, just being that go-to social agency that produces the content so that I can do everything that I want to do at once because it is nasty out here, yeah. you know that. And then we got to worry about our love lives, too, mm-hmm. on top of that. Yeah. And our lifestyle don't make it easier. Not at all. And I'm a, I'm a woman, <laughs> you know? Christ. So it's like I had a pandemic boyfriend just like everybody mm-hmm. had a pandemic relationship, I feel like. Just shout out to her. <laughs> she hates me. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and that nigga she hates me. It was like so weird because he was so smitten, like in the beginning of the pandemic when, you know, things uncertain things were uncertain. Yeah. And then now we're figuring out virtual junkets and like now we're doing things and like it hit a point where I knew we wasn't gonna go anywhere when Rowdy Rebel came home and my homegirl Beanish, shout out to Beanish. 
called me and she was like, make it to Terraboro at Jersey. And then you know artists, they don't give a fuck about time. They don't have any consideration for what you got going on. You must stop, drop, and roll for any fucking thing that they mm-hmm. want. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I ended our morning routine to go capture content for the whole day. And then when I came back, he was on some like, you know, you left me home to fall around gangbangers. And I mean, that's what happened. But, like, that's not what's happening. Mm. Mm. Gosh. Nah, not, nah, yeah. So it's like, yeah, I was yeah. I was PTSD following around the gangbangers. <laughs> no, I was imitating the Will Smith's father yeah, part. Know, that went over your head. I don't give a fuck because I still went and did what I had to do. Went viral. My fucking YouTube, I ate off of that. I paid my car note for, like, five months off of that fucking video. Fuck that nigga. That's hard. You feel me? And on top of that, I was just on some, like, you don't think it would be a look. That, you know, the shorty who's been documenting Bobby and Rowdy while they were incarcerated and before they were incarcerated, who used to, you know, hang out with them and smoke. Well, not them, but Bobby. You know, you don't think it would be fire for me to get this exclusive and you just be happy for me. But now a lot of men can't, like, see outside of that. Like, I saw Scotty Beam talk about how she would never, you know, she's never had a man truly fully support her without being jealous. Like, one, not only is she thick, she got hove on Twitter spaces talking about, yo, let her speak. Mm-hmm. Men can't handle stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Like, at this point, she got to ask hove if he got a friend because mm-hmm. it, it's it's crazy. If you around a, a dude's favorite rapper, he's going to act like your biggest op. Facts. Don't make him like Cash Cobain. <laughs> <laughs> Shit, don't tell me twice. <laughs> See, niggas, I seen niggas do some crazy shit for that nigga, man. Yeah. I'm just like, give it a break, my boy. Grown man. <laughs> uh, ultimately, what do you want your legacy to be? Um, I just want people to know that I'm just real. Like, you know, it's not going to be perfect. I'm a flawed individual, man. And I'm an acquired taste. Mm-hmm. Mm. You might hear some shit about me. Mm. And uh, I might have to be like, yeah, this is true. <laughs> I did that. Or you might come to me and be like, have I heard this and this sound crazy? It don't sound like you. And I might clarify what it really was. Mm-hmm. But, you know, regardless of what it was, I just want people to know that I'm always authentically me mm-hmm. and genuine. Can't deny that. Can't deny that. You've been the same since since I met you. <laughs> I've been the same since I was a baby. My home girl, my kindergarten bestie, literally says that she'd be like, "Yo, I'm amazed that you're literally the same." I was the president of the whole school. Wow. Legit, like I was the president of the school. I ran a dope ass campaign with my little poster, put the lights on it. I was a little teacher's pet. You know, made sure I sat right in the front, bring my teacher's gifts. But if you you know, I would get it shaking after school too if you was, you know, getting crazy. So it was Life a lot. It's all about balance. How many fights? How many fights did you get into after school? You know, I didn't fight a lot, a lot. <laughs> that I didn't, double a lot was crazy. Yeah. No, because like in comparison to like yeah, you know yeah, people who facts. I've hung out with or no, just facts. things that happened in school. Niggas be getting school, down. Like <laughs> New York in the early t- public school in the early two thousands. Yo, I remember. Like, there will be niggas getting pulled off in stretches and still getting their ass beat while they on the stretcher. Like, it was it was a wild time. So, like, I wasn't like that. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, if the teacher was ostracizing a student and that one student trying to talk to me and they say, if you talk to her, you're going to get in trouble too. I'm like, bitch, get the fuck out my face. <laughs> and then, you know, it's it's the mouth. It's the mouth. It's, mm-hmm, yeah. you know, my mouth's slick. The comebacks are crazy. A lot of people ain't as slick. So, you know, <laughs> they be wanting to knock my head off. It's so funny, too, because you just made me think about, like, back when I was in elementary and high school, any nigga who came from New York and they came to my school district, like, he, he would be like, yo, d- d- don't fuck with him. Like, like, because the way niggas would talk about how they yeah. how they got it shaking in school and then, mm-hmm. like, just, like, you know, the way that they were acting and all that, like, you just kind of knew, yeah. Yeah, like, leave, that you, nigga, leave that nigga alone. I'm, 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 Some niggas was lying. I'm, I'm sure. Because my sure. I, my nephew moved to Jersey. Mm-hmm. He's 10 or 11. I I'm, I'm feel bad that I don't know how old he is for real. But um, he telling people he witnessed a shootout when he used to live oh in Brooklyn. <laughs> and I was like... Jaden. <laughs> He's telling people that so he could get his little cool points mm-hmm. and he's dating white girls and stuff. I'm just like, baby, I got to go over well, there and teach you. Well. <sighs> I know that's the culture. I know yeah. it's what he's around. Yeah. So, you know, I can't, I can't, you know, do too much. But, hey, 
Yeah, I didn't get into a lot of fights though. Mm. I definitely defended myself. Yeah. Bitches was haters. I hate to be that person, but <laughs> bitches was really haters, like mm. for real. Like yeah. I was the cool girl who was smoking weed, young, into hip hop. So all they niggas want to be around, and I'm not ugly. So it's like mm-hmm. he probably acting like he my homie and probably secretly like me on the fucking low too. Mm. So it was like a lot of things that would contribute to me just getting into bullshit on yeah. top yeah. of my slick mouth. Yeah. <laughs> All right. I love it. I love it. Well, listeners, we hope you enjoyed getting to know Miss Two Bs a bit more. And uh, of course, you hear their voices every week. So we got a lot more stories to come. Um, and I, I want to do this more often. Just random like story time. I feel like we have all accomplished so much and we spend so much time talking about other people on this show that maybe the listeners don't know enough about all the dope stuff that we do. So we will we'll come together, sit crisscross applesauce, and do <laughs> and do stay busy story time a bit more often. But I salute to that. everything you're doing. It's Thank been great you. to watch your career over all these years. Great to reconnect. Like I always think about that. How you just randomly DM me during the pandemic. I was like, oh shit, Ebony, what the fuck? <laughs> like, you know who right? gave me the idea? Who? Brittany. Oh, uh, Brittany Ortiz. Mm-hmm. Okay, nice. She nice. was like, Eb, you need a consistent place mm-hmm. to be talking. Mm-hmm. And I can't do it, but I think you should reach out to Armand. I was like, you know what? I fuck with Armand. I'll do it. Because a lot of people have asked me before, mm-hmm. but I feel like they would just be trying to use me as like, you know, to try to be like the Joe Button of their podcast. Yeah. And it's like, nah, I only debate with people I respect and if I think you smart. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah. Just shout out to Britt, too. Like, she's awesome. But we'll have to bring her back on, too. Word. But. Yeah, so that is another episode of Stay Busy with Armand Sather for you all. So let us know your thoughts on the Ice Spice album. Let us know your thoughts on Lotto's, Lotto's album trailer. Let us know your thoughts on Dochi. Let us know your thoughts on house music. Um, let us know your thoughts on Jason Tatum. Uh, let us know your thoughts on Love Island. Let us know your thoughts on <laughs> fucking French fries. Let us know anything. Engage with us. That's what we're here for. And so for Brother Will, for Miss 2 B, so you had the chance to get to know in a uh, in more depth, and of course for myself, the bald nigga bombshell Armand Sadler. <laughs> Whoa, what we need you to do, as always, the most imperative thing, besides brushing your teeth and washing your face, is stay safe, stay humble, stay busy, and wash your ass too. The, yeah, don't forget that one. Yeah, too. boy, <laughs> do that too, cause you got nasty. And deodorant too. I know summer's With the ending, but like, yeah. Oh my God, facts. <laughs> Yo, I seen yo. No, nah, we'll talk. Yeah, whatever. Lady, y'all. Holy moly. <laughs> <laughs>